Ladies and gentlemen, my cameraman is fired, and welcome to the Pro Poke Bowl Season 3, Week 2. My name is Pro Poke Noob. Last week, four contestants actually went up and shot up in the leaderboards, where four are looking to get their names in to the top of the standings. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Let's go right into it. Let's take a look at the standings as quickly as possible. W. Wellington, the L.A. Ledians, Houston Haluchas, and Arizona Articunos all enjoyed a 2-0 victory last week over their counterparts, the New York Nintendo Males, the Glissa Padres, New York Ninetales, and the Ottawa Central. And coming this week, we'll see if they can change that. In round two, we have the Houston Haluchas versus the New York Ninetales, the LA Ledians versus the Ottawa Centrets, Arizona Articudos versus Galissa Padres, and W. Wellington versus the New York Nidoran Males. This definitely proves to be a nice start to the season. The funny thing about this season is because there's already four people up there with three points, that eventually means we're going to have a little bit of separation between the points, unless everyone goes 1-1 against each other. Then we're going to have a very interesting tiebreaker later on. Before we get into some of the matchups and talk about what happened in Week 1, I do have to announce that one coach tonight will be unable to make it. Uh, the coach of the Ottawa Centrets, Lukeman98, has bowed out for the night. He is not feeling well. So unfortunately, if we do not find a substitute for him by the end of the night, it will be a 2-0 victory handed over to the LA Ledians, a.k.a. Coach Sweet D. Which means his match will be left until the night. It will be given all night to see if we could do it. If he ends up showing up and is able to participate, we will obviously give him the opportunity to do so. Let's talk about last week. Last week was extremely exciting with how it turned out in terms of uh, the battles. We saw an extreme improvement come out from the likes of Ivan. We saw Mitch try and go off against uh, Scrubbington and try to actually do a, quite a bit of a work against it. Unfortunately, it did not go on his way. But I think one that we really do have to turn to is actually, let's talk about Ivan Valdez. Former champion, uh, I realized that when I was talking a little bit last week, I mentioned that he was consistently getting better but not quite making it there. He's a champion, and that was pointed out to me, and I wanted to make my point clear, not to cover my ass, but I do think it's an important thing to note, that... The thing that I like about Ivan's team this season is that it's definitely an improvement in his drafting phase. Not even just through weaknesses, but just the overall feel of what he went for with his team. It's definitely a stronger... It's definitely a stronger feel. I want to see he if he could bring out those gimmicks because I think, like I said, if he plays it out more standard, he will do better. But at the same time, if he could bring his own flavor and make that work, I'm sure that he can gank, take at least a point off of some of the top competitors alongside him with, you know, putting him, I kind of slot him in as kind of the middle of the pack, but the upper end of the middle of the pack in terms of skill and gameplay and stuff like that. And in terms of consistency... Um, we have seen him consistently. At least we know that he can either consistently win or consistently lose, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Because when you have erratic weeks here and there, you can't really match, which might be good in his case. But um, overall, I think that he's going to be showing a lot of resilience this t uh, this season already, just through his week one performance. And we'll have to see what he can do up against today. Uh, we were, there was one switch made. Let's announce our first... Uh, trade if you guys did not see the trade the trade was posted at about m uh, monday morning 4 45 a.m i was still awake i apologize about that but the arizona articunos have made the first trade they have traded out their magneton in exchange for bronzong a very very nice trade bronzong kind of sitting there a lot of people pointing out in the trade pool that there weren't a lot of um there weren't a lot of uh pokemon that people were really looking forward to but uh Scrubbington definitely prioritizing another defensive mon over his Magneton. Magneton is a nice wall breaker, can do some things. Looking at it, though, it actually ended up being good trade value for him because it's a UU Pokemon, so if anyone wants to pick this up, they do have to trade out a UU or an OU Pokemon to grab it. So chances of that, we'll see, but... Uh, seeing that fighting is a big deal in this particular draft phase, or in this particular draft period for the season... Uh, Bronzong is neutral hit, but it just has great defenses on top of that, brings the Levitate support, which is going to stop a lot of the ground attacks. That seems to also be plaguing a lot of teams, so I definitely like the choice here to bring it in. So we'll see what we're going to do. So as you guys can see in the bottom here, I have just slotted, pointing at my OBS, I've just slotted down here. It will not receive a number. It will just be put in or show all the substitutes, but nothing else will be gone in. If he trades back for Magneton, we'll keep going up to date with the statistics there. Uh, but other than that, let's take a look at this. Who are we going to pull in tonight? Let's grab. We haven't actually seen everybody, so if everyone could please give me their paste me's as soon as you can. Mitch, you're here, so please, if you can, drop me your paste me's. If you have dropped it, I don't think I've gotten it. So far, I've gotten Scrubbington's, uh, Ivan's, and 
Diego's. So we have those three. I do need the people who are going to battle. Of the people who are actually here, I don't know where everyone else is. <laughs> we actually can't start. Mitch Mitchy is here, but not here. Okay. You're five? Nah, I need all of your Pokemon, Mitch. Five? What do you mean you're five? You're five what? There are literally no matchups here that are actually ready to go. Well, in the meantime, you know what? Let's take this opportunity to take a look at the trade pool. We actually didn't get the touch on it last week, but now I have it open. And I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to actually take a look at it. Um, a lot of people were saying that a lot of things that were left over were not really usable. I somewhat agree. I think Bronzong was definitely a good pickup. But... Got it? But I do think that Bronzong was one of the things that he picked up that definitely does allow him to have a little bit more defensive options, especially the Arizona Articunos. Uh, in terms of the UU tier, I think only Magneton is the only one worth picking up. We don't see Weather Wars being a giant issue in this particular season. Uh, but we have a lot of RU Pokemon that are actually quite good, depending on what you need. Beware being one with the... Uh, is it Fluffy ability? I can't remember. The one that reduces the damage, the same thing. I think it's Fur Coat. Same thing as uh, Fur Frow. But that one definitely allows you to take the physical hits. Plus, normal fighting stab is not the worst thing in the world. It's a pretty bulky Pokemon if required. Rybombi being a very good Pokemon as well. Quad resisting fighting shuts down the fighting threat that we're seeing. But another one that a lot of people are talking about but didn't actually pick up was Frostlass. Now, Frostlass being a very good kind of suicide lead does bring the Destiny Bond, the Taunt, the Spike, stuff like that. It can do a lot for your team. Uh, and I'm actually surprised it hasn't picked up. However, looking at how people are trying to attack approach this particular season it looks like more of a defensive setup might be better than more of a suicide lead it doesn't feel like giving up a pokemon slot to a suicide lead pokemon would be actually smart i think it does make more sense to have that kind of uh defensive pokemon that can set up your team now having said that there could be an improvement stuff uh teams as mitch or even inert fury like any of the more aggressive teams i think frost last could actually fit well if they so choose to actually pick it up again no problem world leader we're still here. As you can see, stalling is great. Uh, Mitch, you didn't whisper me at all, did you? Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, so, I do think that there are some Pokemon that can still be recognized as usable in this. Very particularly in the RU tier. In the NU tier, we actually had a nice discovery. There was a guy named Stealth Bomber here last week who was talking about Vespaquen. And I do agree with that. Vespaquen is the quad resist to the fighting uh, attacks, but I think Rybombi just being the, the, having the ability to sweep and stuff like that with Quiver Dance and has that kind of that base 126 speed, which is incredibly fast, uh, might be a little bit better. Other Pokemon that could be of worth noting, War Turtle being that Rapid Spinner, people are starting to suffer with the amount of hazards that are on everyone's team. The Vion actually just recently got banned from PU, but uh, definitely another Pokemon again that could Quiver Dance with the Sleep Powder and stuff like this set itself up. Uh, but something that actually I think was somewhat overlooked was Relicanth. I actually want to talk about Relicanth. Relicanth, with a choice band, going for stuff like Head Smash, smashes through walls. And considering that we're not looking at a Gastrodon or a Swamp or any water ground Pokemon except for Quagsire, I think Relicanth was not necessarily an overlooked Pokemon, but might be an option later on if someone's having issues with the defensive teams. I certainly think that... Um, that amount of pure power that can come out from the attacks would be nice on someone's team because sometimes you can't just set up and going for the little chip damage here and there is not going to beat a defensive meta. Really can't just slamming its face into it should be the best way to go for it. Sounds good, World Leader. You're actually, I think, going to go first. Let me see. Let me take a look at the matchups really quickly. Boop. Yep, you're good to go. You know what, World Leader? Ivan, prepare. You two are going to be first. I forgot Serena's actually a spinner as well. I believe she does get rapid spin? I thought it was... Or defog. I guess it is rapid spin. Hey, Mitchie. No problem, man. You guys could drop me your pace spins really quickly. All right, World Leader is giving me his. Just give me one moment here. Oops, should close that. Just give me one moment here. We'll be talking about it quickly. Uh, just make a note for myself here. So it will be the Galissa Padres versus W. Wellington first for tonight. Uh, Galissa Padres coming off a loss. Unfortunately, did not have to. was not here last week against Inert Fury, but was close to sweeping game two with Marie trying to go for the Belly Drum Snorlax, which to me is just a world leader special. It's a world 
of wonders when I get to watch World Leader Battle, and I love to see the movesets he comes up with, and actually almost succeed. And the questions that we asked after last week was, can he do it if he's the one that plays? Right? I really want to see if he's playing, if he can make these movesets work for himself. And if he can, then I'm definitely excited to see him try and take some battles off of people. Um, taking a look at the team matchups here. Where are we here? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Why are these moved again? Why do these keep moving? Yes, you are, Ivan. Right. You know what? It's actually World Leader versus... I'm looking at my teams, because you know what's happening? I keep scrolling down. I'm just looking at the week that's in front of me, which is actually round... Well, that was, that was round three. I'm right here. Arizona Articulus versus Glissa Padres. Clearly, I need to sleep more. But either way, we're going to have Tyler versus World Leader to go first. No, not you, Mitchie. It'll be Tyler versus World Leader first. So, Arizona Articulus versus Glissa Padres. That makes more sense with my actual setup here. Where are we? Where is his name? All the way over here. Glissa Padres definitely brought out some interesting movesets last week, and we'll see if it works against Scrubbington. I honestly think that it might not work against him, but um, in terms of, we have to look at the threat that is Conkeldor on the side of the Arizona Articunos. Again, a very highly contested Pokemon, one of the MVPs of the draft pool, and we saw him use everything with Marie when Maria played. She, was, she used all 12 Pokemon, but... I, I don't think he actually has an answer to this. He has the likes of, like, Gengar and things. He's got to be careful of uh, stuff like Knockoff. Well, I mean, Knockoff is the big one. But it just feels like Conkeldor on its own gets great coverage against his entire team. And it, it really would surprise me if... Um, like, it would honestly surprise me if World Leader could even take out the defensive core that Scrubbington could build for himself... Like, just looking looking at the Pokemon. Now, having said that, he does have some of his good Pokemon on his own, you know. He does have a lot of wall breaking. He has the potential to set up with a Metagross if he wants to. Galissa Pocket to be doing a lot of damage. Gliscor, it could become kind of a wall war. Gliscor might be the best bet as long as he checks for Ice Punch on Conkeldor, which I would highly suspect because we see Glyspo uh, Gli Gliscor on the side of the Galissa Padres. So, I'm kind of curious to see how he's going to handle it because otherwise... I mean, Ice ice Punch kind of hits everything else, so it might have to be like a switcher between Metagross and Gliscor type of thing. I'm not too sure he's going to do it, but his Pokemon, if he definitely switches around, he can even use Slowbro now that I'm thinking about it, try and tank up as many hits as possible. So he's got to be careful with what he's got, and then we'll see what he can actually do against it, but it's going to be super interesting um, to see. Like, I really don't know what he could do against Scrubbington, but I'm also seeing whether or not Scrubbington has just... You know, prioritize that Conkeldor centric draft, and it's gonna make it work that way. Otherwise, um, I think it'd be kind of a waste. I think Flygon could be a nice pairing here because he can handle the Pokemon. Actually, no, yeah, he can handle the Pokemon that would be walling the move sets and just kind of bring more variety. Um, let's take a look here. What else does he have that could help out? Dustnoir might be nice against the slow king, uh, against the slow bro because of the ghost coverage. Uh, he did get rid of Magneton, which would have been nice for the Slowbro, but he does prioritize the Bronzong, which is perfectly fine. But I do think that we should expect either a Skun Tank or a Dust Noir come out just to maybe handle that Slowbro Metagross type of combination that could come with Gliscor checking out Scrubbington's moveset on Conkeldor. If he even decides to bring that, I think he will, though. Uh, Escavalier can also be a nice check here. Uh, just comes in, can be wearing Assault Vest, take a few hits, and then ram the defensive core in to the point where Conkeldor can kind of finish off the rest. Now... While, pro while proposing all those Pokemon, those are quite slow. And on the Glissa Padre side, you have stuff like Zerork. You have, uh... You do have Gliscor is pretty fast on its own, but you do have the likes of Gengar and Zerork, so he does have to be careful. Even Glissapod could put some threats in here. So, if he doesn't get through that defensive core, World Leader could outspeed and try and do his own damage back. So it might be a nice little matchup we're going to be getting ourselves into here. Of course, if you guys like to see all the information for the Pro Pokeball, please look down below. Everything is updated by the next day, if not two days later. You can see all the information that's going on between stats, team usages, as well as the brackets 
and any trade Pokemon that's been going on. Everyone can keep up to date. Of course, if you haven't taken a look at the events section atop the channel, you can stay up to date with the dates. It's pretty much every Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Start at the very least. I will be here at 8.30. Tonight was a little bit different. I was talking with my boss. I do apologize. And I'm also looking at the wrong week. So, you know, I'll get good at this one day. One day. Actually, I was better in the other seasons. This is kind of sad. But let's just wait to see. Once they get into their matches, we're going to be going from there. We did see that kind of trick last week, Ivan, and the funny thing about Gengar Zoroark is Zoroark could actually go for Dark Pulse to try and fake a Dark Pulse on Gengar. It's a stretch because it doesn't necessarily fit with Gengar's moveset, but again, in Mixed OU, you can kind of get away with that at times, depending on what you're working with, right? The, the funny thing about Draft Tears, or Mixed Draft Tears, is you have to work with what you have, which could force you to sometimes go down to a lesser... A lesser desired moveset. Um, but it can still catch people off guard. In most cases, though, I mean, if you see Night Days use, Zorak kind of blows its cover. That's the only problem with Zorak. Plus, Team Preview basically butchered the usefulness of Zorak beyond 6th gen. So, actually, beyond 5th gen. Mike Draws, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. He'll be back in a moment. He's been he's dealing with some stuff of his own. He'll be right back. But yeah, that's the thing that I'm really looking forward to is uh, World Leader actually picked up the Zorok, which I didn't expect. But Zorok is a pretty good Pokemon. It's got base 95 speed, I think base 95 or 100 special attack or 105 special attack, and it just um it has some good movements. It's just unfortunately its niche is kind of wasted. So it's almost like playing with Florge. Florge is a very solid Pokemon stats wise, but you don't have an ability you can abuse. And Zora kind of has an ability it can abuse, but if it's read correctly or exposed, you kind of lose the usefulness of it. So you kind of have to try and get an early mind game going on your opponent and try and pick off a Pokemon. So you kind of want to disguise it, bait out something that's weak to, to Stab Dark or Flamethrower or something like that, and then Zora gets as much damage out before it's, you know, if you see a Slowbro using Flamethrower, actually it still gets Flamethrower. That's kind of, or is it just Fire Blast? I think it just gets Fire Blast. But regardless, you can make a Pokemon suddenly breathe fire like, a, I don't know, a Shuckle. Bait it out, and then, you know, try and keep doing that bait. Zorak does take quite a bit of uh, skill these days to use correctly. So. We'll see what he comes up with. Let's see what's going on here. Of course, if you guys want to see any of the previous weeks or how the draft went down, you want to hear an explanation more into the Pro Pokeball, uh, other than checking out the information below, everything is archived into the collections section. If you guys want to check that out, it was just posted by Nightbot there. Thank you very much. Um, if you look at the collection section, Pro Pokeball Season 3 uh, is its own playlist. Every Pro Pokeball will be stored in its own playlist to go from there. You guys can always keep up to date. It's also very good, which is something we haven't really prioritized lately, but or until this particular season. But with the amount of statistics that we do give, um, generally speaking, it's cool to go back to watch the previous season and see how people battle. Now that we're having a lot of regulars in these tournaments, it gives people an idea of how to go with this. Nope, actually, Scrubbington has just told me he is ready. And we can go from here. Let's get it going. First series of the night, ladies and gentlemen, between Galissa Padres and the Arizona Articunos. Let's see how this one plays out in general. Super excited to see how this one's going to go, but we're going to see Galissa Padres lead off with the Shuckle versus the Smeargle. This is kind of funny because Smeargle actually gets kind of an advantage here. Could go for the Taunt. It also is faster, so whatever type of setup's going to be going on, Smeargle's going to get away with first. If he does end up going for a Taunt, predicting a Smeargle or predicting a Shuckle being used, they're both going to kind of set up on each other here, and I kind of like this because... Well, let's see. Can they answer it? Actually, funny enough... Articuno's bringing out that Bronzong instantly, but Magic Bounce is going to come out of the Smeargle, immediately bounces back the Sticky Web, and now that he's got Spore, he's basically going to have the pick of whatever he wants to do. He can set up at least one more Hazard before he ends up killing himself off. Ends up going for the Parting Shot, though. 
Uh, I was expecting a U-turn, but he actually is going for the parting shot. Of course, parting shot being Pangoro's signature move, which reduces the attack and special attack by one. Allows for it. But this is a problem, though. World Leader stayed in. For Alligator is free to go for a Dragon Dance. It's definitely a setup. I think he's actually looking to see if he could take stuff out, but the Waterfall is just going to go for the damage. The Shuckle actually wakes up and still gets the Sticky Web off. Unless that Smeargle is running Defog or, or Rapid Spin, Flygon, have to, Flygon would have to run Rapids or uh, Defog, and that's it. I think the Sticky Web is there to stay, and it doesn't. It does actually kind of hurt PZ and for Alligator. So I'll have to see if Dragon Dance is on this Flygon or what he's going to be doing with this particular. But Glissopod going to come in onto the Flygon, both making a switch there. Glissopod's going to be slower, but that's no big deal. It should be able to take whatever hit this thing wants to go for. But first impression comes out. We did see this last week where uh, first impression was on the Glissopod, and he does end up getting a lot of damage out there. But as, per as kind of pseudo-predicted or called... We do see a Defog on the Flygon. Very interesting, but the bulk up actually coming out from this Glissopod. This looks very similar to what we were looking at last week, but that's a lot of damage that could come through. Bronzong could be going for the likes of something like a Gyro Ball, but it is slowed down, so it's not going to be doing that much damage. Also, Water Typing means that's not going to do much. So what is Bronzong going to go for? I would, I would assume some kind of Toxic, but he ends up just setting up the Reflect. Now we're going to see going to Conkeldor. Conkeldor not taking that very well. He could probably go for a Drain Punch, though, heal off all that damage, and then uh, Glissabot can't really do anything here. The plus one's not going to help it as much as you'd think. Mm. Thunder Punch, though. You know, I completely forgot that the Bug-type resists fighting, and that works out in his favor because Red Card held up, Conkeldor kicked out of the game, Liquidation's going to take out the Flygon. If Shuckle gets back in for some random time, maybe on a Bronzong or on the Smeargle, you could see Sticky Web set up again if he opts to go for it. But Parting Shot's going to come through. He does want to take away that attack boost, which is going to make it, I think, even easier for Conkeldra to come back in. I don't know if it's going to, though. He might even go into the Feraligator, predicting the Liquidation, try and set up from here. He does end up doing so. Leech Life, though, excellent move by World Leader, although it still doesn't give him a lot of priority or pressure on him because this Reflect is set up. We do confirm Light Clay. Oh, no, we haven't confirmed that yet. But we do see that this thing could go for at least one DD, and then it becomes very difficult outside of Slowbro taking a crunch and trying to threaten this Feraligator with a burn from Scald. Try and take it out. Well, let's see what he's going to go for. He's actually going to go into Snorlax. Makes perfect sense, but the DD coming out. Uh, Got to be careful. If he's running that Belly Drum set again, this thing is going to die to a plus one Waterfall. Could also get flinched. We'll have to see what's going to end up going. Unless, I don't know if... Scrubberton feels safe to go for a second DD. I don't think it's worth it because the body slam is just going to hurt regardless. What type of play is he going to make here? I would assume that he knows he can't take it. He's just going to try and go for the flinch. Doesn't get the waterfall off. The figgy berry is eaten. The body slam comes through. If he gets a process, that sucks, but it doesn't actually end up coming out. And now we can actually confirm as of two turns ago that light clay is on that bronzong. Slowbro is going to come in, tanks up the waterfall, yum yum, but does have the regenerator right now, hopefully. If he is running Regenerate, although last week, we noticed that he most likely had Oblivious on, because setting it up as a Mega Slowbro right away, ooh, god. Ugh. Setting it up before, he did not get the Regenerator bonuses when he brought it back in, so. The Crunch is enough to take out a Mega Slowbro, and now it comes down to what does he have to take a hit and potentially fight this? I don't think he has anything left. Snorlax took a beating, Galissapod's gonna get killed. I am commentating this game, or we are watching the battle. I don't think Zerork outspeeds. I think this is game, unless this is a Scarf Gengar, could go for the likes of a Thunderbolt if he's carrying it. We'll have to see what he's got here, but he is going to go into the Gengar. Aqua Jet might be on for Alligator too. We'll have to see. Could be a Focus Ash Gar as well, but it's not going to end up being the case. It's actually the Zerork Jebated. As he tries to fake out the Gengar. Now, having said that, if that was a Scarf Zerork, we didn't remember that from last week. It wasn't a Scarf Zerork. Glissabon might be able to take a hit and go for the Leech Life. I don't think it's going to do enough, though. It could. He also has first impression. He has to watch out for that. But the paralysis ends that first impression. Job out the window for Big Papa. His kids are going to cry with no money, no food on the table. That was a chance he had. But unfortunately, not paying off. Pokemon being Pokemon is going to stop that chance for World Leader to try and bring this back. He has nothing to take these hits back. And that's already game one going over to the Arizona Articunos. He has nothing to hit this. 
Sounds good, do it. Do it, world leader, if you have to. He's gonna hide this stuff, and ladies and gentlemen, Arizona Articunos up 1-0 already. Outside of that pair up, I don't know what else he would have had, honestly, to be able to do against that team. But very interesting that he does end up bringing the same team back this week. Um, now, the really unfortunate thing about all this is... Uh, he actually ended up... What happened to my music? Hello? Thank you. Uh, he actually ended up not having anything to answer for Aguilar, which actually looked like Scrubbington was going for it early and then realized that he had to soften up a couple of those Pokemon. But there's a couple things to note. Snorlax can take a plus one uh, waterfall. Shuckle cannot take it. Um, and he doesn't have anything to outspeed it. So for Alligator now suddenly becomes the focal point of World Leader to build around. Looking at his team, Slowbro was not able to take a crunch at plus one. Like a rock, I don't think outspeeds it. I don't remember if he had anything scarfed on his team from last week. It might be the Chandelure, but that's not. That would outspeed if it was scarfed. At uh, plus one, we do have to worry about Aqua Jet. We didn't really see anything come out of the Arizona Articunos. We saw the uh, Conkeldor actually go for Thunder Punch, but other than that, we saw Defog on Flygon, which might give World Leader a little bit more information about. Uh, when to set up his shuckle. He also has to be careful that that magic bounce, if that magic coat comes out from that smear wheel again, he's just going to put himself on the back foot there. So, not that that ended up mattering. Most of this did not actually end up mattering. It was just the Feralgator came in. World Leader did not actually get things going when it came down to um, trying to get that first impression off to damage the Feralgator. Uh, so we'll have to see what he actually ends up doing. Well, I don't know. There's nothing he can really switch into this. I'm kind of afraid for World Leader, but he has brought out other things before. If you remember what he had from last week, he could throw in a curveball. Try and set things up. Gamer, you're a couple of weeks late. That's no big deal. Thank you very much for the follow, though. Appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoy the league. If you'd like to sign up as a sub, if anyone ever needs a sub, we do actually need someone to play for another person tonight. If Lukeman is here, he can post you that team. But um, we do this about once or twice a year. We've This is our third season right now. It's, it's a mixed OU draft tournament. That we have a lot of fun with. It's definitely grown a lot in the community. Not that we do showdown much anymore, but it has grown amongst the people on the ter in in the channel, and it's a very fun and inviting place for people of all skill levels to have fun with drafting and then playing it out in a multi-week tournament. This tournament does run for a total of nine weeks, seven battle weeks, a, a drafting week, and then the playoffs. Of course, top six do go in. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two of the first set of the night. Can World Leader bring it back for his team, the Glissa Padres, or will the Arizona Articunos take the 2-0 on the week again? Shoot himself up to six points. Might be up there with Diego if Sweet D does not have a coach take over for the Ottawa Centrets. We're going to see what's going on here, but let's take a look at the teams. Nothing changed outside of the Arizona Articunos. I, the Claydol and the Chandelure kind of interest me that he's uh, switched these things in. So Slowbro, knowing that it can't take a plus one crunch after it takes some damage from the Feraligator, basically means that he's potentially trying to fake out um, some kind of Scarfer. But if I recall, was there a Trick Room on that Claydol? I feel like there was, but either way, Spore outspeeding that. Yes, this was the Trick Room Gengar. I completely forgot about that. Um, so, he was running originally zero speed IVs, negative speed nature, quiet nature. Uh, or no, it wasn't quiet nature. It was something else because he messed it. He put relaxed nature on instead by accident. But, interesting note is that this thing is going to be outsped by Smeargle because Smeargles usually run max speed. So, if he's brought the clay on the chandelier in, he's looking for a trick room option, which I like the adaptation. I'm curious if he could pull it off. The party shot is going to come out now. He can easily threaten with the likes of either Flygon or Feralgator. Flygon's a little bit of a safer bet because it can tank the fire stab, and Shadow Ball won't be doing as much. It seems to be more of a defensive Flygon. He's actually going to opt to go for the Feralgator, knowing maybe he because he could take a Shadow Ball, go for a DD, and try and finish this as fast as he can. 
That is a very possible. That is a very likely possibility. Plus, when Waterfall would finish this thing off in no time. Then again, if he goes for Trick Room, he could set things up. Oh, he doesn't get the Willow. Ooh, World Leader eating a world of hurt right now. Doesn't get the hacks. Gets hacked, then doesn't get the burn. That's the type of stuff we were looking from World Leader, though. They get him off guard, and that's what I was talking about. You know, those types of little techs can get him. And I think we didn't see an item on Frolligator, though. Did we see a Life Orb last time? It's Sheer Force. We actually can't tell. So, can't tell if it has Life Orb. But based on the damage, probably. He actually has Sub on this, too. Ooh, nasty. But the Trick Room is going to be set up by the other Trick Room user here, which is the Clay Doll. Actually, I think Gengar gets it, too, if I recall correctly. But Zen Headbutt's going to come out does not break the sub. That's unfortunate. Now, here's the scary thing. Once he breaks that with the Zen Headbutt, which I'm assuming is going to happen on the second one here, he just goes for another sub, and he can actually go for a second DD and maybe just end this. But World Leader actually opting to switch out right now. Dear God, right, I got Bamboozled yet again. Jebaited number two. And he just takes full damage from it, but now Pain Time's going to come in. It was 87% before... He's actually going to opt to go for the Belly Drum? To heals up to full because he has the Gluttony ability. The Waterfall is going to come through. Brings him really, really low. I guess this is the best he can do. It's not like he's going to get the Belly Drum off anytime soon. But it's already over. He can't stop this for Alligator. This thing is a giant threat. Actually, a Scrubbington special. He loves for Alligator and setting up with it. This is one of his favorite Pokemon to play in his casual time as well. So, If that plus six sat on him, that would have finished it. But Substitute comes out. The Trick Room is down. The sub is up. Excellent call. Waterfall comes through. We don't know if it has Infiltrator or not, Ivan. If it was from last week and he had Infiltrator, then definitely it could have done through it. But the fact that he missed that Will-O-Wisp is detrimental to him, unfortunately. I want to take a look at one quick thing as it dies. Claydol is left. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a Life Orb for Alligator. Ouch. Aroni pizzas, but in record time? No, there's been faster. It's Big Papa versus the world. He goes for the first impression. Says you're not allowed to have a sub. That crunch actually doesn't do a lot of damage. World leader does not want a six. So he is gonna try his best here. If a crit happens, it's just gonna be a giant spit in the face. But Arizona Articuno going up 2-0 on the week, recognizing that for alligator is a threat. That the Glissa Padres do not have a Pokemon to solidly check. That just sucks for him. That Willow is missing. Willow is if that hit, that would have at least contained the damage. Maybe it could have gone with the Slowbra or with the um, play with the Snorlax in the Trick Room. But in the end, I called it way too early. I thought this thing was dead. It's gonna die. Wait for it. 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 Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Dark type conversion, by the way. There you go. <laughs> GG. Articuno showing up yet again. We're going to announce it at a later date, uh, saying. And with that, I mean, let's put it this way. We kind of called that, you know, World Leader didn't have an answer to that, and that just solidified it even further. Sub DD for Alligator, knowing that it's going to be just something that's going to be hard for World Leader to handle. I mean, the hacks did hurt him a bit. And you know what? We can't even really talk about much because we didn't see anything past that. But really, it's just on Scrubbington making a great call on that for Alligator Dragon Dance setup. You know, Game 1 had to do a little bit more work for it, but Game 2 just went straight into it. It's like, what are you going to do? You have Trick Room, but your Trick Room Pokemon die to the for Alligator. So, and that Will-O-Wisp would have hit. It was Life Orb, so it would have reduced the damage significantly. But, unfortunately, it's just not going to be the case. And, you know, even First Impression, 
Both times, actually, the hacks happened. Where the first impression didn't hit from Galissapod, and now the Willow miss from the Chandelure. Unfortunate, but you know what? <laughs> For Scrubbington, he didn't reveal almost anything this week with what you'd have to do in a situation where that for alligator does get checked. And Conkeller didn't even have to sweep. He just took it out with his own Pokemon. Congrats to him. He's going to go up to six points in this tournament. No, World Leader, you're still in Whispers. <laughs> Unfortunate. All right, on to our next match. Let's see. We are going to call upon... This is round two, right? Let's go W. Wellington versus New York Nidoran Males. Ivan versus Mitchie. This one will be cool. Because... Nidoran Males coming off of a loss last week. W. Wellington coming off from a win last week against Lukeman. Um, and now, let's let's put, it, let's put it in perspective here, right? This was the one that I said last week on stream after the, all the battles. That this is going to be a true test for Ivan specifically. But it's also both players that I believe have made themselves a much better draft this time around. So I'm extremely curious to see what's going to be going on in this match. I think they both have defensive and offensive threats that kind of complement each other's strategies that are going to be just clashing, and it's really going to come down to the actual to the actual play. We're not going to have a Pokemon that just sweeps through each other's teams. Um, I do think the Nidoran males will have to be worried about stuff like the Manaphy and the Shaman, because we saw Ivan set him up very well last week, um, and has even the very defensive Pokemon like Florge. But between Terrakion and Manaphy being a thing, you know, Mitchie's watching for that, but at the same time... Ivan's watching for that Darmanitan, he's watching for that Staraptor, right? These Pokemon all being very powerful hitters as well, so... This one's gonna be cool when this one actually happens, so... But the red card play working out quite well, and the thing that I really like about red card on Galissapod, oddly enough... I believe if you proc its emergency exit, you still switch out with red card, is that correct? I actually haven't seen that interaction, but that was something that I recognized, I'm like... You know, you could probably just make them switch when your Glissopod's at a disadvantage, right? So you knock it down below 50%, it has to switch out. But you red card it, and I don't know if Emergency Exit goes after or even if it procs. If it does, I believe you go after. I think? I don't know. It does? What's the order? Do their Pokemon switch first? Because if that's the case, that's beautiful insight because that means... That means that you choose what you get to switch into with Galissapods. That's really, really cool. You kind of—it's like a reverse U-turn where you make them make like you force them with a whirlwind, and then you get a free U-turn off of it. So that's kind of cool. I really do like that play. But alas, that match is done. Let's see what Michi and Ivan can bring out this time. Both of them. If I, Mitch gets any points off here, he will separate himself from the 2-0, which will put World Leader down to the dumps a little bit. If Mitchy can actually 2-0 here, he will be able to keep up for the top two seeds. At the current time, it's looking like Sweet D and Scrummington are walking away with six points apiece. Now we have to see if Mitchy can try and keep up with the race to try and just hold the higher seeds. Just as a reminder to all the battlers, please make sure you pop the timer in-game. Even if you know you're going to keep up the time and stuff like that, just make sure you put the timer on for consistency's sake and stuff like that. You never know when something's going to happen. Like, you know, a person walks away because they're being called by someone, which they can't help but to keep the uh, flow of the tournament. You know, keep that timer going. We'd like to thank everyone for coming out watching tonight. Robin Chaniana, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate support, friend. Welcome to the Pro Pokeball. I say this every week, but I, I'm so glad that even though I've burned out from Showdown myself, that I do get to watch battlers of all skill and all strategies and all gimmicks and just have fun commentating it. It truly is a really, really amazing thing that I get to do on this channel. It's such a great community that ends up just coming together and enjoying the competition, not so much um, mind games. <laughs> What? <laughs> Am I going to participate in the VGC Pro Pokeball? I don't know about that one more later. But back to my original point. I really do enjoy 
commentating. Because even if I make a bunch of mistakes, most of you know more than me, so this makes it kind of fun. Lewis Cyber Delta Tail, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate support, friend. Welcome to the stream. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, oh, shouldn't talk that much. I'm sure that they're going to be getting into the battle as soon as they can, ladies and gentlemen. We are in to game number one of the second series of the night between W. Wellington on the close side and the New York Midland Males on the far side. Ivan versus Mitchy. Let's see what's going to be going on here. Hey, I mentioned the Star Raptor. Metric also being a threat. They are both bringing threats. They're, like I said, Terrakion, Manaphy, and he's bringing the Star Raptor. I did predict the Darmanitan to maybe try and handle likes of Shaman and just punching other things. But the app's going for the Espeon, which I do like. It's going to hit uh, Nidoking and Donphan on the special defensive side. That's going to be great. Let's see what the both going to be leading off with here. I do see an Espeon kind of leading to try and stop the uh, rocks with Magic Bounce, but he ends up instead leading with the Registeel. Does value getting the rocks up. They might just exchange rocks, unless Ivan feels like he wants to go for the Earthquake here. Could put some pressure on the Registeel instantly. <laughs> These names, though. <laughs> Mitchie always has the best names on his Pokemon, and they're not even offensive. It's kind of funny. <laughs> of course, you guys are allowed to join. The, the battles are always posted in chat. You guys can do it, and chat is not shown for obvious reasons. Um, he is going to make the switch, though, into the Aloma Mole. It does not want to take the Earthquake. Ivan does go for the offensive play, which I do agree with. Um... I do think that it was the right play. It does just make him switch into that. He doesn't want to risk the skull though, so both of them aren't going to get rocks up. Rocks is still danger. Our rocks st are still dangerous for Mitchie or for Ivan to set up because that magic bounce could still come in from the Espeon, and then he loses a lot of pressure. How you doing, Icy Vibes? Now he can go into the Shaman. The Shaman is really good because has a natural cure. So anything that Loma Mola would do to Shaman literally is null and void. So Shaman's actually a counter to a Loma Mola. That's how you use that term. Counter. So. If the Shaman comes in, I don't know if he's going to make any change. He actually ends up going into Heliolisk. Ooh, does that mean he's got Dry Skin on his Heliolisk? That would make sense. So Dryskin, he's trying to get that boot, or he's just trying to get the uh, nullification in there, and goes for the Volt Switch. Back of the Dawn Fan, we're most likely going to maybe see an exchange of rocks here now. I do think the rocks should come out. I don't think Mitchie wants to make that risk of going in, predicting him to go for rocks instead of Earthquake. Although Ivan might go for the standard play and just go for the rocks here, but the Loma is going to come back in. He does end up going for Earthquake again. Interesting. I'm kind of curious how much that Earthquake's going to do to that Registeel. Um, looking at his team, Registeel is most likely Especially defensive, I think that's how it's going to work. Loma Mola will be better physically, I guess, because it's not going to take Terrakion and stuff like that. Or Nidoking, even. This thing's just the bulky mofo. It's going to go for the Toxic, predicting the Helios to come back in. Ivan going for the same place. Not the worst idea in the world, but the Protect is going to come through. Just gets a little bit extra chip damage down on the Heliolisk. We have not seen... We do see Leftovers, actually, on this Heliolisk. Interesting choice, but he's going to make the hard switch. Into Dawn Fan, see Manectric come in. Ooh, Ivan firing back. He doesn't care if he's sister. I don't know what that means, but either way, <laughs> he's gonna threaten the Earthquake now. He does have to make the switch. He's most likely gonna go into the Star Raptor. This might be the time that Ivan goes for the rocks, getting Mitchie on the back foot. So they breakfast. The Pro Poke Bowl is a mixed OU draft tournament, Louis. We run this about once or twice a year. Uh, participants come together. They draft out of two separate pools. And they play a series of two match. Try and get to the top six to play in the playoffs. For their chance to have the Pro Poke Bowl Championship Cup. With their name in it. But he is going to go for the Rocks. The low Mola comes in. I believe Ivan has now regained momentum. I definitely like that play. That was a very, very solid hard switch into the Dawn fan. To get that Manetric out of there. But he does have the Rocks up now. We could see maybe Defog on Star Raptor. Highly doubt it, but... Toxic's going to come through. He's reading him right now. So this is very interesting. And this is what I was talking about. They both have better drafts. And I think now that they both have standard comps, Ivan is looking a lot sharper now. Mitchie's going to have to find a way to deal with this. Hyper Voice does end up coming through. Kind of over predicts there, thinking that the Volt Switch might... Or, sorry, the Volt Absorb... Or, sorry, Lightning Rob Manetra could come in. 
But he does end up going for hard voice. We know it's left over, so he could try and go for the volt switch. I think he's just going to hard switch here into Shaman. It would make the most sense. He's going to actually go back into the Dawn fan act. An interesting choice. Maybe predicting the Manectric again? It's okay, Louis. You'll have your chance. He's going to go back into this predicts the Toxic yet again. Now, at least Ivan could just stand here and kind of just take that nonstop. Makes the switch into Shaman now as the Wish comes through. Now this is where he has to make the smart switch to get onto that Star Raptor. Or even the Roserade. Uh, in this particular situation, ooh, that's a tough one. Because he doesn't really have anything that can necessarily kill it. Ice Beam Nidoking would be the best, but Star Raptor outspeeds. Not that our Star Raptor can kill it, though. Unless it's like Choice Band. Would, would, Life, Orb Cho would Life Orb Reckless Brave Bird one-shot Nidoking? You know what? It probably would. <laughs> it, it probably would. I don't remember what that thing looked like. Might be carrying Intimidate, though. He is going to end up going into Terrakion as the Registeel comes in. Wow. Registeel is an interesting choice. Maybe predicting the Toxic, but now the Terrakion's in. If this thing has Swords Dance or, a, or Rock Polish or it's Double Dance, this could mean trouble for Michi. This could be very dangerous for him. Did he actually make the switch in the Heliolus? This is switch for days as Lomola comes back in. I can't complain. This is what most battles above 1400 look like anyways. So, Volt Switch does now come out. Ooh. Not the worst thing for the Nidoran males. He can go for Wish right now. He has Regenerator on his Aloma Mola. So, anything that's going to want to heal, he can even heal himself. As Seafler actually ends up coming in. Now, I think... Mitchie's probably going to go into the Registeel. At this point, there are so many switches going on. This is when Mind Games can start to get... Good and bad, right? It's a double-edged sword. He does end up bringing the Rosary, which I think is an even better call. Seed Flare does... You're late for the draft, though, Louis. They all drafted Pokemon out of a pool a couple of weeks ago, so there are no Pokemon for you. How you doing, Rich? Can you get me your pace bin, please? And I need it from you as well, Mitchie. He's going to end up going for Psychic. Dear God, you don't see Psychic on Shaman every day. But he's going to take out the Roserade. That's the Ivan special right there. Bringing out those weird techs. Never forget the Chlorophyll Tangrowth with Ancient Power that killed off Mega Charizard Y. Never. <laughs> he ends up taking the Brave Bird. Getting a bunch of recoil damage. Down on to the, the uh, Star Raptor. That could be Bandit, actually. Now look at it. Dawn Fan's going to come in and kind of check. Could be a lot of damage. He might just end up sacking off his Star Raptor, going for as much damage as possible, try and weaken it up for the Espeon, perhaps. But he's going to he's gonna value it. He can go for the Wish. That's the nice thing for him. Rock Slide actually coming out of the Dawn Fan. So Ivan definitely bringing the moves that's going to handle the Pokemon. He has he, It's a good thing that he knows the Pokemon that he's handling. So you sent out Skype? Thanks, Mitchie. It's so weird calling you Mitchie. I'm sorry, man. It feels very, very really weird. Shy Guy and the Wailing Sheep, thank you much for the falls. Welcome to the Pro Pokeball. Well, the Wish now comes out. This Heliosk is a bit in the pain in Mitchie's side, and he actually has lost the Pokemon who could come in. Roserade does have respectable special defense, can also take the Volt Switch, is a little better. We see this Nidoking switch in now, as the Registeel is going to come back in. Does have to be careful of Earth Power, although if this is what I predict, which is a special defensive Pokemon, it could definitely take one and go for Rocks to start reducing how often Ivan can make these switches. I'm kind of curious as to why the Nidoking came in instead of the... either the Dawn Fan or the Trachyon again. He might be predicting the Toxic. If Scald was fired off, though, this would have been really bad for the Nidoking. There would have been a lot of damage they would have to tank. But he was predicting the Toxic. Maybe being a different pressure, but even then, Heliolisk still makes sense because Heliolisk does get him the momentum. And if at best, what he could do is try and hit the Manetric with like a Hyper Voice later on, that would be his best way of doing it. He does opt for the Earth Power, realizes he has to make this play. Stealth Rock does come through with the Registeel. Now Mitchie has taken re-control of the match. Most likely going for a Protect as I leg out. Let's try to make that prediction, but thanks game. As the T-Bolt actually comes through, predicting the Star Raptor. Ooh. I would like to see an Ice Beam if he's going to try and predict the Star Raptor. Unless he's not running Ice Beam, we are lagging a bit, don't worry about it. I would have gone personally for the Ice Beam just because it does the same amount of damage and it would hit uh, Manetric for neutral in case he tried to do that. But I think he predicted the Ice Beam, not the Thunderbolt. Either way, though, the Protect's going to come through. His Shadow Ball flies out. Ivan revealing three of his four moves. 
One can only assume Ice Beam is his last attack, but we're not exactly sure. Doesn't have enough having Shadow Ball, though. That is going to be good against the Espeon, but here's the problem. So Registeel dies, it's done its job, it can't T-Wave, it can't Toxic. Espeon, though, named Cat, wants to come in and say something. Psychic, that's just assumed. We don't see Life Orb. This could be Scarfed. Uh, Scarf Espeon being very, very good in Mixed OU. We've seen this before. Uh, I believe Ivan. Or who used Espeon last time? I can't remember. But I've always been a fan of Scarf Espeon. Even though it's base 110 speed, that just makes it super fast. Has really good special attack. Base 130. It just does a lot of damage. Knockoff comes through. Gets rid of the leftovers on the Alomola. Makes it slightly less annoying, but it's still an Alomola. It is the pro-choice that both Ivan and Michi can approve of. As with me and my... Honey with tea. Man, if he does end up coming in now as the wish comes through, that was dangerous. But he's ended up going for a wh Whoa! Ooh! Waterium Z Rain Dance. So, gives him a speed boost. On top of the fact that he has hydration... Toxic does nothing to Manaphy while the rain is up because Hydration instantly heals off the status. He can start going for Tail Glow. Ooh. So now, it becomes an issue of, does he switch in the Manetric, risking Ivan going for Surf predicting this? Does he switch in an offensive Pokemon? Or, I don't think he could take that risk. I think he goes into, I was going to say going to Star Raptor. But unfortunately, ooh, that is plus three special attack, plus one speed. If he doesn't have a Scarfer, if his Espeon is not Scarfed, he has no chance of killing this off. This is bad. However, we usually know that Manaphy does not carry... Well, it could be carrying Grass Knot. It could be carrying Grass Knot. That'd be dangerous. He does have the Rain Dance. If he's carrying Grass Knot, this could be game. He outspeeds everything. And one-shots in the rain. I think Ivan has found his way in. If he's carrying Grass Knot. If he's not, then a bit of an oversight. But he's had good answers for all the Pokemon he's worried about. The Rock Slide on the Dawn Fan. Uh, bringing the... Sh uh, what else did he bring? Oh my goodness. The Psychic on the Shaman for the likes of... What's it called? A For the likes of Roserade. Does it look like he has it? Oh, the plus six. Too predictable. I think that's it, boys. He is trying... Okay, so what he's trying to do is he's trying to waste the rain. If Ivan's smart, he doesn't try to kill this. Ooh, the rain will be down, but you know what? It's plus six. It doesn't matter. He's at plus one speed. Espeon could try and come in, try and kill. This thing is not going to outspeed. It's just going to die. I think he forgot about the speed boost. He keeps the speed, Mitchy. He keeps the speed. It's not because of the rain. It's because of Waterium Z. That's it. Ivan's done it. He's actually going to take him out. Plus six Surf coming at you. Critical hit. Hope for the Bright Powder on the Espeon. But I think that's game. W Wellington. Well, well, well. Doesn't matter. Not enough. Takes him out. Do we see a quick attack on a Star Raptor? That is Scarfed. We did predict the Scarf Espeon. We're saying most likely the Scarfer. But ladies and gentlemen, game one to W. Wellington. Top hats off to him. Well played. Wow. That's disgusting, World Leader. Don't suggest that. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay. Wow. Well, let's take a look at this. Does he have anything for that outside of a Loma Mola? He has the Bio Plume. He has Roserade and Vile Plume. If he can keep those alive, now he knows though that Psychic's on that Shaman, so he can't keep it in against the Shaman because they'll just get one shot. That is an excellent call by Ivan. Wow. Found the Kryptonite, actually. I didn't even... I mean, that's that's more of a moveset, not so much a Pokemon that we'd expect to sweep. 
Mitchie, again, he's got so many special defensive Pokemon. The Registeel was threatened by the Terrakion, didn't stay alive. Um, but he has Roserade and Vileplume to tank up the Manaphy. But he's going to have to handle those Pokemon. So, game two, I'm kind of curious. So, we have a Scarfed Espeon that did about 43% with Psychic. If he can get more prior damage onto it... Which he could do if he gets his rocks up faster. I think if Mitchie can get his rocks up faster. I mean, let's be honest. Ivan was making really good switches. Both of them were making some pretty good predictions. And then Ivan started winning out on a couple of them. Mitchie did get in there with the stealth rocks. But... I mean, after that, he had no chance. Even if he forgot the speed boost, he had no chance with it because everything was getting one shot by plus six, right? Unless he thought that he could just bring it back because he would be outspeeding with the Mega Manectric, but... Yeah, if he keeps that Aloma Mola, maybe that Roserade's safer. He can stop the Manaphy, but he's going to have to be careful with that. Because... Otherwise, I don't know how he's going to be able to tank that up. But with that... Ivan is up 1-0. Can he make it 2-0 on the week? Can he go up and join the ranks of Lord Scrubbington and potentially Sweet D by the end of the night? Let's take a look at this. I've been saying, I love my team Dre Gouji, though. That's most likely a Salt Vest if he's doing that. He has opted to trade out his Roserade for the Dre Gouji. That does make more sense. Um, Dre Gouji having the Dragon typing. Also has, like, I think base 123 special defense. Can't take it. I can't believe I overlooked the Dre Gouji. That was my fault. Knowing also he went for Surf. Kind of curious, actually. He did not reveal another move on his Manaphy other than the Surf. Maybe he's trying to hide the Ice Beam and... Maybe he's trying to hide Ice Beam and Grass Knot? Who knows? But either way, Nidoking versus Star Raptor. That's a much more aggressive uh, turn out of uh, Nidoran Males to start this off. He's going to U-turn out into probably Registeel or Lomomola. You know what? Probably Registeel. This would be a great opportunity for him to get his rocks up much earlier. Tanks the hit. He's going to be perfectly fine with that. The Ice Beam, Ivan going for the straight play in his face. But... Knowing how uh, much Richie needed those rocks last time to stop him from switching that much, now he's going to have to deal with it. Turn 2, rocks are going up. This was Gen 4. Yeah, crit would kill this. It's not dying. So he's going to be able to get his rocks up, go for a protect. This might be an opportunity for Ivan to try and make a, an aggressive switch. To maybe even try and... He won't have enough turns to go for Waterium Z and... Um, one of them turns to go for Waterium Z and Tail Glow. If he does have HP Grass or Grass Knot, uh, he could try and just set up Manaphy from here. Because again, it's like the Feraligator. It's just kind of a giant threat he's got to deal with. How you doing, Boglord? DJ Candy, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Pro Pokeball. We're currently W. Wanton on the close side is actually up 1-0. It is a series of two players who 2-0 on the week receive three points. Those who have 1-1 even matchups in the series both receive a point at the end of it. Ice Be Oh! Wow! I think Ivan has some PP if he made that kind of play. What a move! Excellent Ice Beam on that Registeel switch. Wow, that's a big deal, actually, because Star Raptor could have punched more holes into the likes of the Shaman. Uh, could have handled the Heliolisk with close combat. Same thing with Terrakion. Could have hurt a lot later against the Star Raptor, if it or against the Manaphy, if it wasn't set up. Even the Nidoking could have done a lot of work for his team. But he is going to send his Scarf Espeon. Does not get it, and show up, Shadow Ball is going to come back out. Doesn't quite kill either, though. Psychic is going to come through. Is that Life Orb? Life Orb. Really, Life Orb Shadow Ball is good because it's not Stab, and Espeon does have, like, 110 Special Defense, so. Espeon's got to get its dues paid to it, but Ivan getting work done with that Nidoking before it's dead. That is not Assault Vest. That is definitely Scarf. We know it's Scarf because it outsped plus one Manaphy in the rain. Nice try, though. Um...
Oh, it's a selfish from the Nita King. Oh, never mind that. I thought he was calling out Mitchie on a on a switch in between batches. Of course, if you guys don't know about the Pro Pokemon much, in between matches and once they hand in their pace me's, they are not allowed to change up anything on their teams. No EV changes, no item changes, no move set changes. They're only allowed to switch between their twelve Pokemon roster. Um <coughs> Of course we have no way of monitoring this, but if you're gonna cheat in a casual tournament, then you're just absolute trash. Gotta call you out. Anyways. Ivan losing his Nidoking after taking out that Star after our excellent prediction with the Ice Beam. Uh, most likely he's going to bring it in. I don't know. He's trying to think of what can probably take the hit. Because Espeon does put a lot of pressure down on his team. It's his Choice Scarf. Dawn Fan can most likely take the hit, maybe. Since his Scarf, he could try and threaten this. He does have to handle this Espeon. Unfortunately, he's about 5% off from making it die to rocks. So... Most likely, uh, uh, Mitchie. Oh, thank you, Rich. I'm gonna put that in right now. I'm just keeping track of where everyone's put it. Uh, Discord, and all I'm missing is world. All I'm missing is Centrits. And Nidoran Males is on Skype. Perfect. Thank you very much, Rich. I was just about to ask you about it. Helisk is gonna come in. Maybe Cal can see if he can take the hit. Not too sure. Helisk is not the biggest, not the fattest Pokemon. Or is it going to outspeed? It does have the leftovers. Unless he's running some like weird special defense EVs. It is Ivan. <laughs> he's going to end up switching out into the Dragalge as the Hyper Voice does come through. doesn't do a lot of damage, but any type of damage you could do this. Ooh, Black Sludge. Never mind that. I was going to say AV perhaps, but... What has he got going here? Kind of curious. I think he's just going to go for the Volt Switch, honestly. Oh, so it did have a chance to kill. Interesting. Without the Life, the life Orb. That's insane. Mm. He is so lucky he just didn't decide to drop a Draco if he had one. But instead he goes for the Sludge Wave. Doesn't do too much to the Dawn Fan. Now, Dawn Fan does have to be careful about drop about a Draco Meteor because this thing can run it. Might be defensive, but it could still run the Dragon Meteor if it wants. It might also be running Dragon Pulse. But Alomola is going to come in on the Earthquake. I would have maybe gone for the Rocks there to make Espeon switch in less. But maybe you wanted to be careful about the likes of the Espeon switching in on that particular situation. Knockoff's going to come through in exchange for the Toxic. I don't know about all that. I think it's kind of worth it to start softening up this Alomola. But he does. I'm really afraid that that Espeon's going to come in for free. And everything getting hit by Rocks. I know he's still a shame to take a hit. But he's got to be careful. He does have to be careful. The rocks now do come up. Very patient play. He actually ends up carrying a citrus berry on his Dawn fan, so just more immediate healing. He is the berry master in my channel, so. Can't complain about that. Now, I think what's going on here is whether or not he's trying to figure out if he wants to switch in a Pokemon. He might. Because here's the thing, Ivan could just go for an attacking move. If he ends up going for Protect on his Aloma Mola, Ivan loses nothing by just going for an attacking move. He's either taking a bunch of damage. I think what he's trying to do is he's figuring out if he's going to risk tank to tank the Earthquake to get him with a Skull and try to do as much damage as possible to Dawn Fan, knowing it doesn't have any more recovery on it. It might be worth it, because Aloma Mola, well then again, Aloma Mola could regenerate out and be able to take on the likes of maybe... Terrakion try and go for a burn, or even again tank the Manaphy while it's trying to set up. That might be what he's thinking. But Earthquake kills Dragalge. It hurts everything else on his team, so it really comes down to what type of play is he going to make. Because the nice thing here for Michi is it's not necessarily on the Alomomola to die. He is going to end up making the switch into the Espeon. Interesting choice. Not valuing the scarf to maybe handle anything later on. It could handle the likes. It could have handled the likes of Terrakion and stuff like that. But instead, he's going to end up going out to his Mega Manectric. Okay, so this is good because he now gets his Mega Manectric up immediately, base 135 speed. Has the HP Ice will kill this thing off. So he does handle that. So Dragalge is actually slightly safer. We still haven't seen any of the move outside of Surf on Manaphy. We have to assume Ice Beam's on that move set. What else could he be possibly carrying? I'm assuming HP Grass or Grass Knot. 
I mean, honestly, set it up and who cares, right? Hmm. Now it comes down to Ivan deciding what's going to take a hit, right? Mega Manetric is a giant threat. So I think Mitchie's definitely used his resource as well here. He could have even gone into... Actually, no, going into Registeel would mean he would not die after rocks. He would live with a sliver of health, which is actually not good for him because he wanted to make the switch into the Manetric. He wanted to be more aggressive and get his attackers out here. As a reminder, W. Wellington up 1-0. Terrakion coming in. Knows a damage calc. Clearly. Wants to trade the damage to try and put this thing out. If he has Earthquake, he most likely is carrying Earthquake on this Terrakion. It will kill something. Except a Loma Mola. I'm kind of curious if he's trying to bait it out. Because if he brings in a Loma Mola, close combat comes later. I don't think this thing is choice. I don't remember from last game. But a Loma Mola is going to come in on the Earthquake. Yep, it is just going to be a straight Earthquake. Please stop lagging. I guess he's trying to check right now to see if it is choiced in some way. This could be bad for Ivan if it is actually choice, because in that case, I would have gone for the close combat. Knowing that he is afraid to tank it, I think close combat even does enough damage to kill Mega Manetric from there. But now he just gets to switch it back in. I think Ivan just gave up the pressure he had, because now Mega Manetric gets another kill, or gets another pre gets another thing down on another Pokemon. I think Heliolisk has to now come in and tank it. Heliolisk is doing the least amount of work to everything else. He does agree with me as Tebow comes through. Doesn't do a lot, but he can go for the Overheat, I think, or Flamethrower, and take this thing out. Because it does have Dry Skin, it will do additional damage to it. This music is so mystical. I'm loving this series, though, by the way. Game 1, full of, may, uh, arguably, Rich says, uh, pointless switching. I think it was truly just them trying to get on, to, on, the, on the better foot, and in the end, Ivan does end up getting that Mana Feet out. Almost for free. With, um... Mitchie playing with fire a bit, but he is, speaking of fire, Flamethrower comes through, does cook the dry skin. Healist's got to go back to the uh, skin therapist for that one. And it's called the Dermatologist. Also, apparently, Pinky, st Pinky's not stuck. Pinky, Pinky is not up, it's stuck. It's great. Okay. Now he has to go back into Terrakion. Terrakion, for sure, can kill from there, but Dragology says... Well, what do I do, right? Loma is going to come back with an extra 33%, so that's going to put up to 72% health. But if he sees that, all he has to do is switch out a Loma Mola, because it's not going to die since it's defensive Pokemon. Dragalge comes in. I think Ivan might be in a bit of trouble here because of that particular play. Um, but then again, he could have did this earlier as well. He is going to go in. He knows that he can maybe tank... He might be carrying Earth Power. He was carrying Psychic. He could go for Earth Power here. Knows he can tank a Flamethrower? That's actually quite surprising, but Shaman could be max HP. He doesn't want to take the risk, though. Registeel's got to, got to check for the Earth Power. Sea Flare actually flies out. Interesting. Interesting choice. So he was trying to catch, I suppose, the Alone Mola. I'm expecting a Protect to come out from the side of the Nidoran Males. Definitely keeping their own here. Mega Manectric. Kind of feeling like that Mega Alakazam that Scrubbington had last season in the... In the that uh, Scrubbington had in... The Celebrity Edition. Or just it's just a giant mega threat. It's got a ton of HP or it's got a ton of special attack. It's got a ton of speed. It just instantly puts pressure on teams to tank the hit. And the more that you try and tank it, well, the weaker your Pokemon get to the point where speed just prevails. But definitely Michi on a much better path here for victory. Not saying Ivan's out, but he's just gotta find a way to get that shit that uh Manaphy in. He does end up going for the C Flare over predicts, perhaps? Perhaps? Eh? So Toss does come out, so now it does die from anything that he's wanting to go for. I think he does want this thing to die, but we do see the Life Orb bringing him down. Shaman dies off. Ooh, good call by Ivan. Just goes into Manaphy now. Now he can go for the Waterium Z. Rain Dance. Z Rain Dance, plus one speed. Now it speeds everything on the team, and if he has Ice Beam, this is game. This thing has Black Sludge. It cannot take that hit, I don't think. Maybe it can't. I don't think it. I think it might be able to though. We'll have to see. Ivan's definitely pulling up the damage calculator for this one. If this thing is maxed out in special defense or even HP, it most likely is taking a stock ice beam. 
is definitely living a rain boosted surf. And no amount of hidden power dragon is going to kill this either, so. Because Ivan. At least on the bright side, Sludge Wave, so there's only a 10% chance to poison, even though it's not going to poison him in the rain, so he really just needs to see if he's going to be able to tank it. Tail Glow comes through! Ooh! Is that a taste of Sci-Edge? Is that a Haze on a Dragon-type? Haze? Dragalgy. And Psychic on the Manaphy. Oh, dear. He does not have the Ice Beam, which actually means... Ivan's gonna drop the game. The New York Nidoran males getting themselves... I'm assuming... Back into this, because I don't think he can kill even a little mole. He might be able to. Let's see. Looks like this Draken turned out to be, to be I think, Choice Scarfed. Let's see if he could do it. He could go for. He could probably click Stone Edge here. Just hope to God he can take everything else out, right? Uh, might just maybe not. He might just have to go. No, I think he just locks in close combat here. Close combat should kill Dragalgy from this range. It should. He ends up going for the Stone Edge, though. The Draco comes through. He has one more chance at this. He actually ended up going for Stone Edge, I guess, knowing he can't. Actually, that is surprising. <laughs> Oh, that's a tilter, ladies and gentlemen. Mitchie fires back, grabs himself that point on the week. GG. With that, the dinner males don't get to keep up with the Titans, but Wellington's as well. Don't end up going. Let's take a look at the scores after these first two matches here. So far, this is what you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen. The Arizona Articuno is at the top with six points. W. Wellington, though, being in second place with the four points. L.A. Ledians being with the three points. Still have not received the three free points. Potentially, Houston Halucha is yet to battle. New York Nidoran Males with that one point means that him and the Galissa Padres are going to be enjoying a nice time down at the bottom for a while. With that, we do have two more matches on the night, but first, ladies and gentlemen, I will be right back. I'm going to take a smart break. I suggest that all of you stand up and stretch as well. Thank you very much for coming out to the Pro Poke Bowl. We'll see you in three.
Oh, hey, my mic is still on. Cool. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's take a look at these teams. Let's break down that last series that we just watched, which is New York Nidoran Males tying it up against W. Wellington. Definitely was, I, first of all, that was a really good match. Like both, both series were done very, very well. First match being very much about switching, trying to get the better end of each other. I think the second match kind of went more in the favor of Mitch, that Dre Galgi switch, and the coverage that Ivan happened to have on his team didn't quite handle that Dre Galgi choice, but definitely an excellent call by Mitch to bring that Pokemon out. Um, the only reason why I wasn't calling it really a Pokemon that wanted to tank anything was because I, I expected Ice Beam, but it turned out to be Psychic. So, not that Psychic would not do it, but Psychic was equal amount of damage. And I can see why it would come out to handle the Grass type since both of um, the Grass types on Mitchie's team is part Poison, which would also handle actually the Dragalge, so it is a quite, quite a smart choice. But in my opinion, I think Ice Beam hits more because, well, Dragalge is also weak to Ice Beam. So, kind of unfortunate in that sense, but... Um, Definitely both showing the prowess, and that's what we wanted to see. I asked, can Ivan put up a good fight? And the answer is yes. He put up a fantastic fight. New York Nidoran Males, Mitchie is by no means a pushover of trainer. He's extremely good. And that was just a good showing on Ivan. Like I said, he gets better week by week. And the standard play that's coming out with those little techs, definitely going there a little bit uh, out of left field in that last match there. But otherwise, I definitely think that what he brought and the way that he's playing these matches out is definitely working in his favor. To our third match of the night, the Houston Haluchas versus the New York Ninetales. We didn't actually get to see much of Inner Fury versus Marie last week. Marie did her best to take on the Fury, but the Fury took her. Now, he's still working with the same old team. Didn't make any trades, actually, because uh, he forgot to tell me what he wanted to trade. But um, it's kind of hard to gauge. We saw him build a very Gen 4-esque team last week. Uh, certainly something that looked... Very rich, like he, he can play out multiple. He can play out multiple styles. He's not a fan of stall. Uh, he's more of an aggressive player, but he definitely plays it to the textbook as well. Similar to Sweet D, similar to Scrubbington, uh, Mitchy, even to an extent Ivan, right? But he certainly plays out the style that works for him, and he makes it work. So almost a more, I want to say aggressive Diego, but I don't want to compare Rich to Diego because they definitely like I don't know. Rich is just a very intelligent battler. Not that Diego isn't. Diego is also an intelligent battler. I'm digging myself a deeper hole. Regardless, Rich has the budget Pokemon in the tiers that he's been that he's received. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do this time against Mitch, other Mitch, Mitch nine two six, which we didn't see battle last week. So hey, a bunch of surprises. We'll see how good he's been doing when he's been training with Diego, the boy genius. But <laughs> perfect, perfect trash talk for you guys when you battle each other. But we talked about Mitch's team in a quite an extensive amount last week, and we actually even brought other Mitch online to talk about this particular team. It's extremely aggressive, a lot of um, a lot of weakness, weak to Bolt Beam, half weak to Rocks, very, very susceptible to any type of defensive play, which we already see the top players bringing. So I'm very curious to see if maybe our maybe Key Succession couldn't bring out that aggression, but. Maybe Mitch can. If he could play out a hyper-aggressive team, he would be a person who, like, in my opinion, we saw, we've saw we seen Chaos, we've seen Dagger, and now we've seen Keat Succession. They all tried their best to play it out. I think, honestly, Chaos was the better hyper-aggressive player because uh, Dagger kind of still went for some balance type of balance defensive, but trying to go aggressive with kind of a balanced team. But Chaos was the true Lord of Chaos. He brought out the hyper-aggressive strat and almost made it work to his favor. Can Mitch match that expectation? We'll see when they both get into match. This could potentially be the last one. If there's anyone in chat who would like to fill in for Lukeman 998 for the team, the Ottawa Centrits, please speak up now. If not, Diego, Sweet D, the LA Ledians will receive a free 2-0 this week. Unfortunately, the coach was unable to make it out due to illness. Of course. We hope nothing but the best for a quick recovery. Make sure that he's feeling great. No reason to push yourself when, you know, it's just a casual tournament. Nothing's on the line in terms of money and stuff like that. Always the health of everybody first. Going to the Pokemon Trainer Society, uh, Rich. You'll find him right there. Everybody's named under it. The Los... Los Haluchadors. 
is the Houston Haluchas. And let's see what he can do against the New York Ninetales. <laughs> Can't let you do that, Mitchie. Maybe in the playoffs, if anyone wants to sub it in, I'll sub you in, and then you can try and take out Diego. His Kryptonite is semifinals, so... Actually, both of your Kryptonite is semifinals. That could be an interesting matchup. Would like to once again thank everyone for coming out. Zeno, I see you in there. How are you doing, friend? I hope you're enjoying your night and you had a good stream earlier on. Hopefully PTCGO is treating you well. It certainly hasn't been treating me well. But I see a battle. I see series number three between. That is not it. Here we go. New York Ninetales on the close side. Los Haluchadors, the Houston Haluchas on the far side. Let's take a look at these teams. That's looking very similar to what we saw last week from Rich and Nerd Fury. But New York Ninetales definitely bringing their own flavor. So last week we saw Key to Succession when he was subbing in for Mitch that he brought kind of... Uh, he tried to bring some defense into it. This seems a little bit more of a different style of, uh, of aggression. We like the Mega Pidgeot because Mega Pidgeot just gets no guard Hurricane, which is quite aggravating. You see the likes of Haxers, which Haxers almost did tons of work last week against his, um, Ivan. Just didn't end up pulling up, but we see the superior this time. So let's see what he can do with this. He ends up going straight for a DD against Rich, but Rich going for the Flame Orb. This is incredibly smart because Flame Orb is activating Milotic's Marvel Scale, which when it's Milotic is statused, it gets 50% defense boost. Skull's going to come through against the Araquan. It's not going to do anything. doesn't even burn it, but our, the Milotic is now set up. This will be carrying Recover, so this is going to be a super fat Pokemon. Just hard stops Haxorus as long as that thing's defense is up. He's going to have to get crits to get that going. And Haxorus doesn't really carry anything that can take that out. It has to go for Outrage. has to go for Dragon Claw. He did reveal that it is a DD Haxorus, which is what we kind of expect. Choice Band is also a very solid option. Not my favorite. I like DD personally. Skull comes out again on the Araquan. It does not get the burn, but the Leech Life actually comes through. Just kind of poking around. It's kind of funny because my Milotic is going to be taking a little bit of chip damage here. So I kind of like the approach that Mitch is saying, you come to me. And the thing about hyper-aggressive teams that I think sometimes people falter, and I certainly falter on, is with hyper-aggression, you kind of have to take risks. But if you bring that Pokemon that can kind of soak up hits, especially in a mixed draft um, format, you can kind of force them to make this choice and go, well, I want to see what you're going to go into, and then I'm just going to send in the appropriate Pokemon. But it looks like it's going to be an exchange of um, ca casualties. Casualties? Not even exchange of casualties. Just exchange of pleasantries. Oh, that's the saying. He actually ends up going for the Toxic, predicting Inert Fury to switch out, but doesn't end up happening. Maybe predicting the Sableye? Or maybe even Miltank to go for the Rocks. It could be Celebi going for Rocks as well. Celebi has access to that as well. And I we can't really read what Inert does. I haven't seen him battle in a very long time, but I can only assume that he's going to be going for his kind of aggressive, you know, sit behind these walls and then bring out that Sweeper later type of strat. But like I said, very 4th Gen-esque. Um, seeing these very particular Pokemon. In fact, almost seeing every single Pokemon except the Sableye here, but he does end up getting the Toxic on the Sableye. Good move by Mitch. Predicts that perfectly. Now this thing has to suffer from status. Now, one thing we could look over is maybe Heal Bell on the Mill Tank. The Mega Sableye comes through. His Leech Life doesn't actually do that much damage, but Knockoff's going to come through. That is a very big value for Rich. Saying, you're a defensive Pokemon? Nah, nah, you gotta get out of here with that. And that's actually, like, was one big defensive Pokemon on the side of the New York Ninetales that I just realized has cheerleaders. That's awesome. But, Recover's gonna come through. The Toxic is still keeping that Recovery in line, though, so... Mitch is still feeling safe with this Araquanid. It is actually kind of difficult for Nerf Fury to take this on. He needs to get it weak to the point maybe Knockoff can kill with Weavile. Actually, he already knocked off the item, so he's gonna have to go for something like... Um... I don't even know. What is he gonna go for? Interesting. Maybe knocking off that item too, was too early. He needed the extra damage to kill it with. Brick Break's not going to do it. Icicle Crash, he resists. Interesting. He's going to have to use Selby, I think, to get through this. Or Mill Tank, even. Because this thing could be carrying Safety Bubble, which reduces... Oh, Water Bubble, which reduces the power of fire moves by 50%, which he could be going for. Because we have seen Scald hitting this, so it is Water Bubble. I'm stupid. There we go. So, Overheat's not even going to do much damage. The Raccoonid just kind of craps on inert. He's trying to find a way into this. 
Either way, my luck is now back in no casualties yet. Battle of Fat. This is Team Fat versus Araquanid. Poison Jab actually ends up coming through. Honestly, Leech Life makes the most sense here. Hits the Celebi, hits the Weavile, doesn't hit the Rotom Heat if he's trying to predict the Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat can actually go for Volt Switch. I'm kind of skipping out on that whole fact. He can just try and go for the Volt Switch, try and bring it low enough. Araquanid has base 132 special defense or something like that. Has some ludicrous special defense. So, might not even do that much. So, knocking off the leftovers might be its way, his way to start weakening this thing. He has no way of healing it up either, so. Perhaps that's the reason we saw the poison jab, but the leech life is going to keep him relatively healthy. Now, Inert might be trying to bait him into a false sense of security here. Just keep going for leech life on the Mylotic. That's not going to do anything to you. Might just switch out here on that 69 trademark. Try and get the, um, Rotom Heated now. I feel like he's going to do it now. No, he's just going to go for the recover again. I guess he's trying to get into a good spot where now... This would make sense where he try and switch into Rotom Heat. Because now he's got my lock at 85%. That's a lot healthier than what it was at before. I think that makes a lot more sense for him to do it now. I could be wrong. Nope, I'm right. Rotom Heat now does come in. Leech Life. Ninetales fall a bit for a trap here. So Volt Switch is free. Which means he now gets the inert tries to get some momentum going here. I don't think you keep a Raquinid in, because I could potentially see something like a Miltank trying to sit on you or setting up rocks, and with the amount of uh, damage you're going to take from Volt Switch, coming back in on rocks is not going to be pretty. Can't switch it out, Rich. You make a mistake. You're stuck with it. The Kiram is going to come in as the T-Bolt actually comes through. Wow, actually bringing T-Bolt. And it's Life Orb. Ooh, didn't we see this from last week? Didn't he bring a Life Orb Rotom Heat last week too? Very big threat, actually. I mean, Fire and Electric Stab is pretty powerful to bring it on to the Pokemon here. So, Kiram is now going to be able to kind of stand in here kind of laugh at the damage because it's Life Orb. Sub's not going to do much here. Kiram will be able to break it with the likes of a Dragon Pulse. But Plane Split's going to come out instead. Does have quite a bit to it. Dragon Tail Kiram. I've almost seen it all. Almost. Wow. Dragon Tail Kiram. Incredible. Okay, it brings out the Mill Tank. Not the best thing, but for, for Inner, I'm sure he would have wanted to make his own switch. Like, my Lottery would be perfect against this. This is a defensive Kiram. Not really heard of, but Toxic's got to come out. Wow. Very interesting. The reason why I don't expect that is Dragon is an okay defensive type. Not really. And Ice is a horrible defensive type. Mix those together. You kind of leave them with like a good offensive typing, but not a good defensive typing. So kind of catches us all a little bit off guard here. But works out in this case. So the Ninetale is going to get away with that in game one anyway. So let's see what he's going to be able to answer it with. He could just go for the Scald here, try and get the burn on the Kirim. Um, I realize as I'm saying that Rich is a, an offensive player. He doesn't like stall, but he drafted himself a stall team. I mean, he likes memes, so everything he's playing is cancerous. The Roost comes out from Kirim as the Ice Beam flies through. Actually, he still does neutral damage because he's not dropping a Flying type. It is Dragon and Ice, so... This is going nowhere. <laughs> In the end, this somewhat favors Mitch because he has the Dragon Tail. Oh, this is amazing. I love this. I love this series. I love this game. I love this tournament. But the Skull is finally going to burn his Dragon Tail. Now switches him out into the Celebi. Ooh. Not a great time to be burned when you're against the Celebi. However, the Celebi is just going to be the one that has up the rocks. As the Ice Beam comes through. Ooh. Does a lot of damage. Not quite to kill can expect a U-turn to come out here, but I would also expect a Dragon Tail to come out of the New York Nine Tail. So he's actually just going to make the hard switch into Weavile. As the Dragon Tail does come out, good call by Mitch. I think he's playing this absolutely the best he can. The burn is actually not that bad because Leftovers does negate it now. So he's not going to die to this. And he doesn't need to do damage per se with the Dragon Tail. He just needs to keep Rich shuffling, right? Superior does come in now as the Recover comes out from Inert. Ooh, Mitch... Being a contender, but definitely showing that he can play this. 
Now he's got to deal with a superior that's going to try and set up contrary. However, we did see the ice beam on the Milotic. So he can't just necessarily get away with that. The Miltank will come in as the sub comes out. Ooh, was this supposed to be like a Miltank that has Sap Sipper? Yep. Sap Sipper Miltank. Called it. Gave it attack boost. Don't think he saw that one coming, though. Rich calling it well. And it actually makes sense on his team if you look at it because... Um, Firewater Grass Core, by the way, and then he's just trying to find a way to handle Superior. Superior could get out of hand with, um, multiple boosts. So this just stops Superior completely. Incredible call by Inert. Just good techs here all around. Even though I don't know if you call Dragon Tail defensive <laughs> Kirum attack. But that Body Slam is going to not only do a bunch of damage to Araquanid, but it's going to paralyze it. This is bad. If he loses Araquanid, I mean, Araquanid wasn't going to be very healthy after he switched out the first time anyways. But, now he's in a world of hurt. Body Slam comes through, kills off Araquanid. The first Pokemon dies 27 turns in. Whew. Am I at LA Fitness? A lot of people looking to shed some pounds in this match. Pidgeot's going to come in safely. I don't know about that, because Miltank's not going to die to a Hurricane. Or, a, a, or an HP Fighting. And I think plus one body slam might just crush this bird. Kill two birds. Well, they're not technically. It's like killing a bird and a bug with an uttered stone. How utterly droll. But anyways, the Mega Pidgeot is going to set up. Is going to go for the hurricane. Looks for the pair. Confusion doesn't get it. Thunder. What the? F what? Thunder Punch Miltank, ladies and gentlemen. It's like they agreed to do this or something. <sighs> you need to go find something to add to this water, perhaps something with alcohol in it, because... Wow. I, I, see, I see World Leader rubbed off on Inert Fury, because... That's certainly a tech, and plus one does take it out, so Keldeo now comes in. Selby's going to come through, cannot take the Surf. It is going to be taken down, but this does mean that I believe the Mega Sableye can come in, perhaps? Or, no, you know what? My Lotta can come in and tank everything up, too. Probably just go for a recover and try and heal up everything. What HP is it at right now? 94%, so it can just come in and tank up everything. But it does also mean that maybe Inert might be using that as a pivot switch, try and use the Milotic to bait out the Keldeo, make it switch into something like the Superior, and then goes back into the Mill Tank. That's exactly what it looks like it's going to be. So he's probably going to try and do the old bait and switch, get the get the superior out, get extra damage on it from the rocks, and then Miltank's going to just completely wall anything because you you tend to see HP fire on superior, so after plus six, no grass type can live. Kyurem is going to come in instead. Comes out with the pressure as you see the switch into the Weavile. Whoa! Incredible read by Rich, but does make sense. Weavile does outspeed the Superior as well, so he'll be able to go for the Icicle Crash regardless. I'm kind of curious what this defensive stats on this Kyurem is, because... I would probably say specially defensive. It could take more hits that way. Like, it's not going to be able to tank anything like a low kick regardless, so... I'm very curious to see what he's got on that. I'm not going to reveal it, but I do want to take a look at it. But the low kick is going to take out... It is going to take out the Kirum, so that is super neat. <laughs> Either way, Keldeo is now going to come back in. Weavile cannot kill it. Now, it can maybe go for a knockoff, try and knock off whatever this thing has revealed. Has it revealed anything? It has not. Could be Scarf. Could be a Scarf Keldeo. I think he talked about how he likes Scarf Keldeo. Not too sure. It is turn 32. Game 1 of this third series of the night between... Houston Hot Luchas on the far side, New York Ninetales on the close side. This HP, I assume, Grass comes out. Sableye gets nothing done with it. He looks like to be death fodder. Unless this thing is choice, in which case Sableye gets a... Oh! It gets a recover off, so it is choice. Ouch. But... You know, knockoff's probably coming now to sacrifice. He's actually just going to end up going for the Will O Wisp instead, try and get the chip damage down on this. As he is able to live one more, so. 
He does have to stay in here and go for the HP Grass, which means Miltank gets that free switch in to go for a free Body Slam after this, if he so chooses to go for it. He can also go into Rotom Heat, go for a potential Volt Switch on the team, because then he can get that free pivot into probably the Weavile. So I think it might be able to do this. My Lana can also just come in and say, screw you, I can tank all this, go for Recover. Um... <coughs> That could be revealing, though, that Rotom Heat does not have Volt Switch. Nor can he put Volt Switch on it afterwards. The Ice Beam is going to fly through. Makes the most sense. Ice Beam hits both the Pokemon that are left over. And this is just not going to happen for him. Goes for the Outrage. Checks the damage. Says, that's good to know for next time. That it still takes two Outrages to kill this Milotic from stock. Ladies and gentlemen, Houston Halucha is showing good form here. In game one, Sap Sipper Miltank with Thunder Punch to take out two of the New York Ninetales' potential threats. Flame Orb, Marvel Scale, Milotic. You beautiful bastard. Just really smart team building by Rich. Putting together a really good stall team and just, you know, still making it somehow offensive, but just finding his way in at the right time. I think taking out a rack when it really allowed him to start bringing out the Weavile a lot more because the Rockwood just kind of goes high and then Leech Life it most likely dies or takes a bunch of damage so Kelio is going to come in he has to figure out what he's going to be end up going for here because if he goes for Surf most likely not killing maybe he has to go for Secret Sword in which case actually nothing can take it ooh it ends up living though ooh. that's really really unfortunate off by a little bit. Actually, if Burn used to do 12 if Burn still did 12%, he would have killed off that Milotic. Sadly, it's not going to happen. That crit helps him a bit. Ice Beam actually is going to fly through instead. Interesting by uh, Rich there. A bit of an overprediction. This is a Scarf Keldeo, I believe? Unless he knows the damage calculations and all of a sudden says it's Specs. But he's going to be able to take out the Milotic. I guess the crit kind of mattered. He was going to go for the offensive play, try and get the extra chip down. Can't predict a 6.25% chance. Rome Heat now comes in. I think you can take one of these. I think that might be what he's saying. I can take an extra Secret Sword. Go for the Thunderbolt. Leave you with Contrary. Superior that can't touch a mill tank well, anyways. Excellent check to it. Almost a counter. Not quite. But Superior comes in instead. Mitch putting up a fight. He says, I'm not done yet, noob. Shut up. Don't play the music early like you did in Game 2 of Series 1 1. Rotom could just go for overheat here. He might... Actually, you know what? This is intelligent. Because he's trying to get it low enough where everything will die to Secret Sword. Excellent play by Mitch. Because if he now attacks with Rotom, he's going to have 45%, which might be enough. He's actually just going to end up going for the HP... He went for the HP fire predicting the mill tank. That should be in range now to die to Secret Sword. He might be able to pull this out in the end. Oh my god, this is getting right down to the wire. It's gonna, all dam it's gonna matter on damage calcs. Just ends up damaging it. Pain Split could come through. He does not end up doing that. Instead, he's just gonna tank the T-Bolt. Oh my. Can he do it? Mill tanks at 50%. Weavile, I might be able to kill with Ice Shard, maybe? I don't know. I think he has him. All he has to do is go for it. That's one. Do we see two? Oh, so close. It's gonna be so close. Mill tank comes in. Cannot take the Secret Sword. 21%. Can Weavile do it? Or does Weavile still have his... Oh, no. He oh, my God. I think he just did it, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go for the Ice Shard. Oh! <laughs> no way! Wow! 1% and a dream... The New York Ninetales throws mud in all of our faces. Oh. Ooh. Again, if Burn did 12%. Mm. Wow. There's no words to describe that, ladies and gentlemen. That was just unlucky. 
I don't know, Diego. Somebody look up that damage calc. Rich should probably do it because he's the one who knows his, uh... Who knows his, uh... Move sets, but... Wow. If I can assume... Okay, so... First of all, the Star War between the two is phenomenal. Second of all... It wasn't Life Orb, uh, Diego. I think it was Choice Ban. Based on that number, I think that's Choice Ban Weavile. <laughs> Mitchie not even being close to a play to a game of the series. But either way, um, it was definitely Choice Ban then because it did 20%. Really. But it was 20%, so what would it be then otherwise? Hmm. Unless he was positive attack nature? It doesn't look like he put positive attack nature there if he was adamant. He might be adamant choice band, which would definitely push that up. But wow. So, they played the defensive stats really, really well. And then on top of that, you know, just squeezing it out there. But excellent play by both sides. You know, Mitch not giving up in the end makes it down to where he's like, well, I can weaken everything, still take it out with Secret Sword. Extremely patient play when it looks like it's about to be down. Definitely pays attention to the items and makes a great call on that, right? And at the same time, Inert Fury just putting that defensive core, bringing out those techs, or even just bringing out the Sap Super Mill Tank to say, screw you, Superior, I hate that thing, um, just completely stops it. But now, the thing is, Mitch knows that. Let's see if he can play around that. In terms of Pokemon he could bring... Um, Cloyster wouldn't do much here. Yeah, Mega maybe? I'm not too sure. It could, it could handle a little bit more of that, but... Funnily enough, he doesn't really have anything to punch in a mil... Excuse me, a mil tank really hard except Haxorus. So if he can do something to that Milotic... Which might be difficult because he's going to try and do the Milotic, which means the mil tank will answer it. Or even the Rotom Heat. But we do know that... Houston Aluchas are running an offensive Rotom Heat, so there's no defensive uh, electric typing there per se. It just has a lot of bulk anyways. Um, could bring in the Rhydon. I don't know. Not too sure. This could be a very interesting match. That was such a close match that it's almost difficult for anybody to call, right? But if that was Adam and Choice Band, he was off by a sliver of HP. A literal sliver, a percentage of a sliver. It's like that. It's like that splinter you get under your nail. Level of percentage <laughs> chance that it would happen. It sucks when it does though. Either way, moving to the game two, New York Nine Tails, up one zero. Is he looking to gain his three points? Is he looking to dethrone? He's already slowed Inert Fury in the race for first. Can he, can he take it and just go up to Inert's level? And say, by the way, I hi, I'm new here. Get wrecked. We're about to find out a lot of information revealed from both teams. We'll see if they make any types of substitutes. What other fatness or trickery can Inert Fury bring out for us? That, that hurts. That hurts as a battler. Especially when... I don't think Adamant Choice Band Weavile is necessarily popular. I haven't played OU in a very long time. But that is, like... You put that on there for a specific damage calculation that you're looking for. And when it doesn't pay off... That's when things hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, though. Game number two. Ninetales on the close side brings the Yanmega. Interesting. I did kind of call the Yanmega. We see a Honchkrow coming in this time. So very, very interesting. The Mill Tank is actually swapped out. I guess realizing maybe he can handle it, or maybe he thought the Superior would be switched out to handle that uh, Mill Tank. But I don't think so, Scrubbington. I don't see anybody doing it. You tried PU, Icy Vibes? Yeah, that's a tough tier. There's a lot of power in there. Let's see if the M egg and the Honchkrow make any difference in this. It's going to be the defensive Kyurem versus the Sableye. 
Make a Sableye gets a little bit of value here. Could go for the Will-O-Wisp right away, handle this Kiram. Or, Mitch just chooses a Pokemon to quickly bring in. He could actually... Theoretically, he could bring in the Superior because... Now he doesn't have to worry about Sapster per se. He can actually just go for the Leaf Storm and kind of just spam it a bit and get a little bit of damage on anything. It would probably be Celebi tanking the hit regardless. But it does leave Superior open to do a little bit more, so... It does look like the Superior is going to come in. Maybe the knockoff comes through here? No, the Willowisp does end up coming off. Rich does not want to risk that thing staying healthy, but it is going to be the Superior. It is the best choice, in my opinion, as well, to tank it. Even make a Pidgeot would have been okay, but here, like I said, he can go for a Leaf Storm. There's nothing that necessarily just walls it. It's just going to take the damage instead. The Selby is going to come in. Here comes the Leaf Storm. Yeah, it doesn't do that much. However, he's feeling confident. He's feeling comfortable. Celebi can maybe set up a Rock Storm. He could take a plus two HP Fire or another Leaf Storm. But the question is, how far do you want to go with it? He could go for something along the lines of a U-turn. Maybe go into maybe what this could be a Scarfed Honchkrow. That could be a thing, right? Or, even then, he knows that his Choice Banded Adamant um, Weavile is going to be faster. Could try and switch that in to try and just go for the Icicle Crash kill right after this, right? But the HP Fire does come through. There's a lot of damage to Selby as the rocks do end up coming out. Interesting, he's actually going to leave his Selby in here. Now, here, you know that Leaf Storm does enough damage, so he's going to go for the plus two. He's going to go for the plus two Leaf Storm and just do as much damage to anything that might want to come back in again. I feel like Selby's just being sacked to bring that Weavile in. Instead, he brings in the Sableye. Oh my god, what a prediction. Nice substitute. Wow. Nice substitute against that Mega Sableye. Which makes it a problem because technically, I think... I don't know if U-Turn would actually break that sub, but the, crit, the knockoff does come through. Crit Matter, totally... I think it actually might, I don't know. Probably not, because it still has an item on it. But, regardless, that Luftor is going to keep it healthy against that burn. He's at plus four. This is getting dangerous. But like we said, that Weavile is safe. As long as it hits, it's, it's going to hit its Stab Ice Shard, which is Choice Band Adam in Nature. It's going to kill Superior. So no matter what gets set up here, all this means for Inert Fury is he's looking for a Pokemon to kill off, right? That Celebi is actually not as... Im Neither of those walls are really important, because the Enmega kind of runs through both of them anyways. Interesting. So maybe he's... I don't know. Maybe he's giving away too much defensive pressure here? I don't know. This is kind of tough for him to deal with. Superior is just a solid Pokemon where if it starts getting set up, even if you're trying to wall it, and even if you have an answer to it, you can't switch your answer into it because it just keeps setting up as hard as it can. Plus, that speed is ridiculous. He's going to have going for that, for that plus six... Mega Sableye goes down, I expect an instant switch into the Weavile, says get this out of here. Alright, so now, does Ninetales, I think you keep this, this handles the, I think this handles the Milotic, I th I do, ooh, okay, ends up sacking it off instead, interesting. So he can go into the Kiram. He can also go into Keldeo. Keldeo might be a little bit better for offensive pressure or momentum. Because Kiram's going to take 25%. Can go for the low kick. But let's say... Well, actually, you know what? If this is Bandit, Bandit Icicle Crash should do a lot of damage to that Kiram as well. I'm not going to reveal what defensive set it is. But either way, it can't take it well, right? This is not a good defensively made Pokemon. I think Choice Band murders it from there. His little fingers are like, oh, if you look at Kiram's fingers. He's going to make the switch to the Milotic, though. The dr Oh, that's, that's actually kind of important because that could have prevented the Marvel Scale from being set up. But he is going to get that free burn on the Dragon Tail miss. That is unlucky. Pokemon just having its way with a couple of battlers tonight. First world leader. Now we're taking a look at New York Ninetales. Ouch. Gonna miss it though. So my log does get the Marvel scale set up. It's not the hugest of deals, but it, it, I mean, it can matter if this thing ever came in on a physical hit when it wasn't set up before. So. Skull's gonna end up coming through. Let's see if he's actually gonna try and go for some extra. He just doesn't get the burn. 
Now, Hodgecrow does have superpower. This could be bad for the New York Ninetales. He doesn't actually have anything to tank a superpower either, so it's going to be taking a lot of damage. Um, regardless of what's going to come in and take it, it really depends on how Mitch approaches this. Funnily enough, though, and let's point this out, on a hyper-aggressive team, we have seen the makings of a defensive core between a Raquanid, which was switched out for Yanmega, and a defensive Kyurem. <laughs> it's, uh, it's certainly a, an age we live in. <laughs> Overheat does nothing, as Toxic is going to come through on the Rotom, does get that extra damage on it. Unfortunately, it does mean that Rome can still attack and live another day and do some more stuff. But it can also go for Pain Split if it gets really low, so he's got to be careful with that as well. But Kiram tanking up that overheat a lot. That minus two is not going to do anything as the Weavile now comes in. Potentially see... Ooh, we see a Roost instead. Okay, so he's at max. Uh, low Kick's going to murder Kiram. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. We could see Yamega switch in here, but... Mm, yeah, we could see Yamega switch in here. Does take 50% damage. Honchkrow is still healthy enough. It's full health. Milotic is healthy. So he does have a couple Pokemon that can take on the Yan Mega. Just, it's going to have to take a Bug Buzz first. Actually, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe Rich can't take that risk. I think Inert Fury has to go for the Esco Crash here to make sure that Yan Mega does not come in and get that free hit off because that could soften a Pokemon that maybe later that Mega Pidgeot could come and take on. Interesting. I think he has to go Ice Crash here. He can't take that risk. Which means Kelio might get a free switch, but then Nerf Fury can use that to his advantage, try and maybe switch into... Hmm, I don't know what to switch into. I mean, he could be a man and go for two Icicle Crashes, hit that uh, Keldeo. Keldeo does end up coming in. Ooh, the knockoff, though, happens through. Justified, not going to be a big deal. But the Choice Scarf is knocked off, which means... That was an option for him to go for. That is a very good call. I completely forgot they didn't have to go for the Super Effective. Knockoff is just broken. This does mean, though, that this knockoff, this next knockoff will not hurt. It's hard to call it when you don't know his moveset. You can assume that there's going to be a knockoff on the Weavile, but it does slip the mind when it's not in front of you, right? Only happens to the most professional of noobs. But anyways. The question is... I honestly think just my Lotic comes in here. Unless he's really fearing, like, yeah, Mega getting a hit off. I don't see why. I think I think you just go straight into Milotic. Five to five right now. Up. One zero for the New York Nine Tails. <laughs> Grabbing himself at least a point for tonight, which is good for him to keep him in at least. Of course, it's a little difficult for you once you start falling behind with two O's. If you start falling behind in the Pro Pokeball, it's, time, it's kind of tough for you to get up in the standings. But you never know in future racks. That's why in future, in the future, we ha I might talk about doing a double, like going through round robin twice, but it becomes a very long tournament. So unfortunately, at the moment, we only go through once each. So, Stone Age actually going to come through because he knocked off the uh, Choice Scarf. He can switch it up there. Stone Age isn't doing anything. He maybe predicted that Weavile or the Rotom to come in. Maybe even the Honchkrow. Who knows? But not going to do anything. My Lotta can just go for the Recover knowing that he has that freedom. That HP, potentially Electric, I'm not too sure. That Skull does come through. He's got to be careful, though. Keldeo was his winning condition before. He's about 9% away from being killed by that Choice Band Ice Shard. But he's also not Scarf, so now Weavile does get away with just going for Ice Icicle Crash if it needs to with the Choice Band. Um, funny enough, not seeing any knockoff on the side of New York Ninetales. That's just something interesting to note. That items do have a big impact, especially in a draft format. Because, again, you try and make Pokemon like a defensive Kyurem work, you need to have certain items that can enable that. And when you're, when you're disabled as a result, you tend to actually lose a lot of that momentum and pressure, so... Where do, where do the New York Ninetales go from here? This has been an excellent matchup. A very, very tense matchup. All the matches today have been extremely tense. Uh, maybe not so much the uh, Articunos versus the Padres, but... 
I mean, that was a matter of just a bad matchup for him. The Dragon Dance is going to come through as the Ice Beam does not do a lot. That has to be a crit. Otherwise, it's not going to kill. We saw 52% before, plus, or sorry, times 1.5 is going to do about 70-something. Yeah, not enough, but I feel like he's done this on purpose to bring my Lodok to a point where it needs to go for recover, or it needs to die, or it needs to switch into something that's going to take a hit. Keldeo could come in here. No, I think yeah, Mega comes in here and gets a hit off. It is going to be the Kirim instead. Now, hopefully he does not end up going for the Dragon Tail, because Recover will go first, and that would be a giant, giant, ah, uh, he, yeah, he, yeah. And what a Pokemon to bring in. Nine Tails, I think, just gave it away right there. Not going for the kill on the Milotic means that, well, Weavile gets a free bus into the tournament and says, Hi, I'm going to kill you now. Hmm. Not a fan of that play, but hey. Welcome to tournaments, ladies and gentlemen. People make mistakes. At least in my opinion, it was a mistake. We've all set to go. Like, nothing is going to outspeed it. Even, uh... Unless that's a speed boost, Yen Mega. It could be a speed boost, man. Yen Mega goes for the Protect. Tries to get the plus one. But this thing carries Ice Shard. I to do a switch out into a Pokemon. So basically, his win condition right here would be getting the Yen Mega in when he has no other Pokemon to switch out and back into because Ice Shard is just going to kill it, right? So we've seen Low Kick. We've seen Ice Cold Crash. We've seen Knock Off. I can only assume that Ice Shard is his last move. Since he's carrying low kick, he's not carrying brick break, so yeah, it makes the most sense. Pidgeot comes in. Again, same thing here in this situation. He can actually, you know what, just spam Ice Shard from here. He's completely safe. He actually has straight switch into the Yan Mega. Interesting choice. Now, like we said, Weavile just has to wait for something to die. Comes in with the Ice Shard and kills off this Yan Mega. I mean, this would be the time for him to come in with this and try his best. But priority has always been Yan Mega's Kryptonite. It was Valiant. I don't know how much he can actually stall for it, but it turns out it's not even faster than a Celebi. That Celebi seems to be max speed. It could be max HP, max speed. Definitely could see that happening. But the Pidgeot is going to come down now as the Haunch Crow comes through. Hurricane is going to be fired out. Ooh, so close to it, but the Z-move? <gasps> oh, you son of a gun. He went for the Z. He was talking about this last week. Z Tailwind with Scope Lens, double the speed, 100% chance to crit. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way for the Houston Haluchas to take a win in the series. Ties it up one to one. Combine that with super luck. That's not that's not uh, scope lens. That's super luck he had. My bad. Super luck. Same thing with the gluttony. It takes me a moment. Critro versus Critro. One can dream. Wow. I can certainly say that wasn't what I expected, but it happened, and I mean, I expected, honestly, Inert to take over the game completely, but instead, he lost the first game, which is kind of unfortunate. What happened to my face? Face, face, face. There we go. But yeah, certainly took it to him game one, and then game two, bringing out the Haunch Crow. Not, not necessarily making the Haunch Crow switch the best, like, saying that that's the one that won the game, but definitely playing out his Pokemon much differently, understanding the power. And I think Mitch tried to make an aggressive play that didn't work. I really do think if he killed off my Lodic, he had a better chance at it. But, um, in the end, Rich is going to run away with it, gets a point each for him. So let's take a look at what the standings are looking like right now. I'm just going to assume that there is no substitute, and Diego is going to get the 2-0. Hopefully, Lukeman will be feeling good next week. With that, Diego gets a donation of three points. And let's take a look at the standings. After these, honestly, a really amazing week. 
LA Ledians and the Arizona Aracunas both sitting at the top in first place with six points apiece. W. Wellington and Houston Halucha sitting in third place with four points apiece, now both having a 2-0 and a 1-1 score with them. New York Nidoran Mail is the only one. Nope, I'm just kidding. It's tied for fifth with the New York Ninetales at one point apiece. Galissa Padres and Ottawa Centrets both looking to make their mark on the standings. That Flame Orb Milotic was a smart tech for him, Diego. I definitely think it handled exactly what he needed to do, which was that Haxorus. I mean, Haxorus does run through that team if he doesn't have a super defensive Pokemon like that, and he ended up making it work for himself. But yeah, super amazing match. Let's take a look at what we're looking at next week. The New York Ninetales versus the Arizona Articunos. Galissa Padres versus W. Wellington. Ottawa Centers versus the New York Nidoran Males. And the LA Ledians versus Houston Haluchas. This one is a big one right here. Why do I say it's a big one? Because the LA Ledians right now is currently six points. But we know that... Inert Fury can stand up against Sweet D. If he is actually able to take games off of Sweet D, he might be able to slow down his climb to first place. And we do see Arizona Articuns versus New York Ninetales. Not going to say by any stretch of the imagination that Tyler has an easy 2-0 next week. But there is a potential for there to be a separation of people in first place. So... Inert Fury is going to have to stand up to his trash talk, and we'll see what he can do about that. Just give me one second here as I organize the teams. In the correct order, of course. Alright, New York Ninetales versus. Go right here. Everything's in order, everything's good. There we go. Sweet. I think we got everything right. Mitchie, I'll get it from him. He did have a team ready. He said he was going to give it to the person who was going to sub for him. But uh, I'll, I'll make sure to get that from him, and we'll go from there. I'll, I'll make a quick request on that right now, actually. So, week three. I think we've now seen more than enough of every player to know exactly how they're going to be playing it out for the next few weeks. You can generally tell by the first couple of weeks how people are going to be playing. Um... Wait, DJ Hellscream is watching me? Are you serious? Is he actually using my face? Oh, we got to take a look at this. I'm kind of curious now. <laughs> Please pause while we take a look at what he's exactly he's using. Where's my face? I don't see my face. Huh. His homepage? Go to his homepage. I don't, what do you mean his homepage? <laughs> Are you talking about like his main screen? Because there's nothing on his screen here. All right. Either way, we'll deal with this later. We'll we'll take a look at this later. But for now, you're looking at it. Click the DJ Hell Scream. Click the DJ Hell Scream. I'm clicking it. There is nothing. I and I usually use this, so. Hmm. 
and her videos and her clips. Followers. Following? Is that where he's following me? It could be that. Either way, we'll talk about this after I do the analyses here. Um, first off, New York Nine Tails is the Arizona Articuno. So let's talk about these two matchups that will matter in terms of the standings after... Um, after next week, right? Because it could have big implications. I don't necessarily seeing. I don't necessarily see Inert Fury or Mitch at this point dropping down, just giving a 2-0 away. But in this particular matchup, hyper aggressive versus a very balanced team. I think this is similar to if we saw Mitch fight Diego, where it was very difficult for his team to actually handle it. But again, it was key to succession bringing a team of his own, st sticking true to a hyper aggressive format. If that's the way the New York Nine Tails are going to play out their team and bring out like a specially, by the way, as a specially defensive Kiram, max HP, max Spadef. If he's going to bring stuff like that, I think he might actually have a little bit of a better chance against the likes of Scrappington. Um, Con Kelder is definitely going to threaten that defensive core, though. I mean, knock off the Araquan and then drain punch that Kiram, and then all of a sudden it's going to be dead. But I do think, I do think. If you look at the core that he brought today, I feel like Ninetales could potentially set up the likes of Cloyster. Uh, I think Quagsar will actually have some good value against any type of setup like Dragon Dance for Alligator would be handled by an unaware Quagsar. And the like, I think he could definitely handle some of the power. Even the uh, Z conversion Porygon Z uh, just handles it quite a bit as well. So it could be an interesting matchup. I do still favor the Arizona Articunos because they have that defensive strategy. And I do think that they're trying to, um, they will be able to tank the hit. But having said that, we saw this DD Haxorus. We saw us make a pitch out of the Superior. This can punch holes in a defensive core that might not be able to hold up to all that typing. So, <coughs> you're going to battle for Luke Bimugini? Really? Really? Oh my god, where is he? Is he here? We'll have to take those points back then, if he gets a win off of you. But regardless, um, I do think that the, the uh, New York Nine Tails have some advantages to bring to the Ar Ar Arizona Articuno. At the same time, um, <coughs> I think Tyler's not to change much here because his team is just pretty solid in general, right? So I do believe he will be able to. Uh, just play it out. He doesn't have the main tongue, which might be actually a little bit useful against all the water types on this guy's team, but he might be, he will be able to find a way to build around it. And I think he just has to kind of stay, I think it's going to be more on Mitch to adapt than scrubbing to kind of just read the team and know those offensive threats that could burst through his walls and make it a big pain for him. So we'll see how that goes from there. Houston Haluchas versus the LA Ledians. Well, here's the thing, right? The LA Ledians have a much better draft. But, Houston Luchas have that great Firewater Grass Core, and if we saw anything like Sap Super Mill Tank with Thunder Punch, I don't know how much Inert Fury could try and dumpster Diego with those types of moves, because I could see it definitely getting in his head. He's got the Z t Tailwind there with the Super Luck and 100% crit chance. Uh, he just doesn't make a Sableye. But, I don't know, I, f I feel like Diego, because he didn't have to play this week either, he didn't have to reveal any more moves. Or he will be battling, actually, I'm lying, he will be battling this week because he's battling Mugini. I need the team, though, if I don't get the team, he can't battle. So hopefully Lukeman does answer me about it. If he doesn't, we'll give him until, we'll give him seven minutes. If he doesn't answer us in seven minutes, he will still forfeit. Cause, just because that will be a full two and a half hours in the tournament. Um, but I do believe here that... If the LA Ledians, I mean, I really do want to see Critcher versus Critcher. That'd be really funny. I don't know. I said that Inert Fury has a budget team, right? They have the lower end of all the of all the Pokemon that everyone else kind of has. But he's making it go really well. I mean, Mega Sableye by no means is a pushover. Uh, 
Celebi's not a pushover. Milotic's not a pushover. Room Heat's not a pushover. Miltank is a god, apparently. Uh, it's it, it might be difficult for Diego to break through, but I think Diego can go more on the offensive. Like, his Pokemon are able to go more on the offensive. I think Alolan Muck will actually have quite some value next week, simply because it's going to be able to knock off a lot of these Pokemon. It could go AV and just do a bunch of damage to... Uh, Rich's team, so I don't know. I I, I kind of want to leave it up to just I think Diego just has the better advantage team wise. We don't know about trades yet. Like if we look at the trades, I don't know what's actually going to be happening there. So if there are any trades going on, perhaps he could do better with it. But in the end, we're gonna have to wait and see. I I do though give the advantage to Diego just simply off of teams here. Galissa Padres versus W. Wellington. Ivan, sh what a showing today. Where he just basically proved that he can play his team out against the high upper echelon, right? I want to see consistent improvement from this guy taking on the higher skill. Now, World Leader not doing so well so far, but is definitely making opponents sweat with the unique movesets. But not even that, just actually bringing out plays that are making sense to against his opponents, right? We're not talking full gimmick here. His... his Unique movesets are actually having impacts in games, which becomes devastating to opponents that are not ready for that. Ivan is another one who also brings his own unique flavor to his movesets, so it's going to come down to Ivan playing a little standard, World Leader not playing as standard, but can they tick against each other to really mess each other over? Like, Galissa Padres, I think, have a good chance against this draft from... Uh, Ivan, if he can handle the Terrakion Manaphy, which he can technically do with Slowbro, with a particular Slowbro build and stuff like that, I think he's really going to have to bring Slowbro next week. I think Slowbro has a giant advantage. Same thing with the Galissapod, just the Water Bug typing will help against both Manaphy and Terrakion, because he can tank the close bottom back, tank, take a Stone Edge. But, I think there are certain Pokemon that he, I, that I think World Leader is almost forced to have to run next week. But, if he could find his way in like that, um, he might be able to take on he might be able to take on Ivan's giant threats. And then on the side of Ivan, again, I I, I really like what he's doing with his teams. I do think that there were a bit of an odd uh, odd choices with certain moves that he chose. For example, like Psychic on the Manaphy. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But then again, I said that Ice Beam, for example, would just be a better tech against what we see what Michi was running this week, or just runs in general on his team. So. We could see a mix-up. Gudra might not actually be half bad against uh, World Leader. Can tank up a lot of the threats he's been bringing. Gengar and Zorak won't be able to touch it. Zor Slowbro can definitely not touch. Uh, Gudra, even if he brings Ice Beam that week, he has to sacrifice some other moveset to a normal Mega Slowbro build. So, um, I mean, Gudra has a pretty good advantage against quite a bit of his team as well. So we'll have to see. Uh, in terms of advantages, I think Ivan does have an advantage just from a player perspective. But... I do think that both of them have enough spice to add to this mixed salad that I'm kind of curious to see next week how it's going to impact. And of course, Galissa Padres, even now that they're down six points, it uh, doesn't mean they can't come back, right? They could still gain the points. It's not until you start looking at about week five, week six, or about, oh, I shouldn't say that because every season's a little bit different length. Once you get to the halfway mark, you start to learn, are you going to make it to the top six? Because right now it's just top six, right? There's eight of them. Top six get in. So really, all he has to do is gain enough points to get to even the top six. Because right now he's down 2-2-0 two, two, oh series. Which means in his next, in his, uh, let's take a look at his schedule after Ivan. After Ivan, we're against Mitch, Lukeman, Mi other Mitch, and Diego, Right? He's already almost getting out of the way. Like, he's got three tough opponents out of the way. Then he has two more tough opponents, and he has the, so far, not lackluster, but hasn't really shown up Ottawa Centers. We've only seen him one week, too, though. So he could be playing better and better every week, right? The more he learns and warms up to the meta, right? So, arguably, Glossop Padres are kind of playing in this sort of lower level, but... It doesn't mean that he can't score the 2-0s against these guys, and if he gets around to it, he can still make it in the top six. Even if it's not the first seed, he can still get himself maybe in a favorable advantage. Of course, we don't encourage sandbagging, because that'd be stupid. I mean, what are you going to sandbag against? You're going to go to the semis and get destroyed. We don't care about first sec. We don't care about second and below. We care about first place here, right? So... 
But I do think that World Leader can at least take a point off Ivan, if not take 2-0, based on his flavor here. New York Nidoran Males versus Lu uh, Lukeman and Ottawa Centrets. We don't know about Lukeman yet. We saw when he was against Ivan on week in one week one that we just... We felt like he made a couple of misplays, but game two, he definitely warmed up, started bringing out the mind games, definitely made Ivan jump up a little bit. You could see that there was a lot of, uh, like, he did make Ivan kind of lose his form a little bit in that second game, and there was just a couple of unfortunate misplays that brought him down. Um, but we he does have the capabilities. I would put him actually on the level of, of Wellington there, where, you know, Maybe not top four, but top of the bottom four at the moment anyways. If he can keep making those plays, right? He will have to prove that he can make these types of plays. Um, so it's hard to tell. Based on the two performances from Mitchie in his two series versus the one series that we saw from the Ottawa Centrets, I do favor Mitchie. I do think that Mitchie will get away with... Um, I think Mitchie will get away with being able to go for his uh, defensive strats kind of here and just use the Mega Manetric similar to what Scrubbington was doing in the Celebrity Edition, where he just has that power, he has that speed and power, which hurts, right? And, you know, again, looking at this team, it's a very well-built team. He has a lot of that synergy between the Garavire and stuff like that that you can read. But I don't know if he could actually... He doesn't have... He has Rhyperior, basically, to take it on. But otherwise, I think Mega Manectric gets a lot of value against the Sentrits. So it's a little dangerous for him to have to deal with. Um, and then even looking at the defensive core that Michi gets to run, there's not a lot that could break through it, right? But I do think Rhyperior and Volcarona are going to be the top Pokemon for Lukeman to run next week uh, in order for him to actually handle these things. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if he can actually pull that off from there, but... I do still give the advantage to Mitchie, of course. Just based on performances and stuff like that. Of course, if you guys want to make a trade in for week three, Mr. Scrubbington cannot make a trade because he got a successful trade. You have to give it in to me by September. and Or not by September. I got a, I got a solution to this. All right. Your submissions must be in by Saturday, August 26th. 6th, and I will announce it August 27th over the channel feed, which will also go to Twitter. You guys can see which successful trades go through. Of course, like I said, Scrubbington will not be able to participate. Lower Seed will have the opportunity to get their picks first. So for those of you who are looking to grab a Pokemon up that might help you in the future weeks, even the next week, you have that opportunity and that advantage. But thank you very much for coming out tonight. Unfortunately, it has been enough time where I will just give the 2-0 to Sweet D. Unfortunate, we want to see Mugini try and take on Diego, but... It's not going to happen tonight. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for, for all the support. Apparently DJ Hellscream as well. Um, I'll record that for you right now, Mitchie. And yeah, you guys have been fantastic. We'll see you in week three. Same time next Wednesday, August 30th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Till then, have an excellent night and peace.